is it? May 3rd. It is May 3rd, which means this is day three. This is known as Wednesday. New Age in class 23-009. How are we doing this morning? Good morning. Amazing. Good morning. There we go. Trying to help me get the day going and fired up. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> so as we do every single morning, let's talk about what happened yesterday. Jade Martin, did you get a chance to work with your upline yesterday? Yes, I did. And Actually, what happened? The, um, be in a sit and there was a sale. So it was pretty successful. All right. Walk me through how many referrals were collected. Um, I believe it was three to four. I'm not sure exactly, um, but it was between that range. And I think the ALP, um, I don't remember the ALP off the top of my head. Sorry. Well, was it under a thousand over a thousand? Um, I think it was under. Yeah, it wasn't over. It was definitely under. Yeah. Uh, it was somebody that I put to super nice. <laughs> what market? Uh, veteran market. Okay, so on the veteran market, did they fill out the uh, survey in the beginning of the presentation? Um, the survey, I'm not sure. I think it was done at the end. Well, that was a report card if it was done at the end. In the beginning, there was a survey. I'm oh, in yeah, a HB survey. Pro. We're going to see it, but it's been introduced recently. So I wanted, I'm curious if the field's actually using it or not. Oh, that I'm not sure. No. The, are you, do you mean the survey where there's like, where they ask how they were courteous wise, things no, like that? No, that's a report card. That's a report card. Oh, then yeah, no, I don't know what that is. Okay, no worries. We're going to go over it today. Ronnie Reiner, did you work with your upline yesterday? I did not, but I'm going to today. It was for uh, Begonia. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're going to work with them. Let's go to Sierra. Polly, what about you? Um, yes, my upline, Jerry, was very busy with calls yesterday. So I kind of did the homework by myself with all that. But he is um, doing the policy owner services. Mm -hmm. And he closed two, but I saw him close one. His ALP was 3316 How much? 3,316. And if you close that deal, how much would you have made? Um, one moment. Um, 1,243.50 cents. Twelve hundred and what? Um, $43.50. Nice. So it would have been a good night's work for you if you had closed out, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Sky Warren, did you work with your upline yesterday? Did you observe a presentation? I did work with them, but they didn't have any um, presentations yesterday. They said that they had a few today. Uh, who's your upline? Right now, it's um, Dante, Daniel... Um, Art has been there because Ashley is out of town. So is Tori. All right. I was in there as well as the auditor. And I know that one of them had a, uh, well, where are you at? Are you on the East Coast, the West Coast? What's your time zone? Uh, yeah, I'm in Florida. So oh, okay. So yeah, they had a presentation, but it was later. <laughs> uh, in the, I think probably around 11 o'clock your time. So uh, okay. on that one. Uh, let's see. Johnny Spinner. What about you? Um, I did not. He wanted to reschedule because of uh, the class going later than normal. Your upline wanted to reschedule because the class went later How yesterday? Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Ray Kalina, what about you? Yeah, I observed one with uh, Art, and – it was about to get closed, and then the husband wasn't going to be covered because he had um, too many conditions. He kind of, like, backed out. And it was just a good one as far as, like, uh, objections and rebuttals to see how they go when it's not as smooth. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it was a good one. Okay. Yeah, that'll happen, right? From time to time, yeah. you do a presentation, somebody will kick it back, <clears throat> or one of the parties will kick it back and go on from there. Would he have been covered under the A71? Did Art talk about it after the call? Um, No, because it was like the late one. It was already like 1030. 
but I don't think he would have been. He had cancer like last year, type of thing. Gotcha. And I mean, it was sold like on the wife. Like the wife wanted everything emailed. She picked the recommended plan. Like we were almost at the E app, and then he realized that he was going to be paying for it, and he was getting nothing out of it. And <laughs> he was just like, "I'm out." Yeah. It was just, wow. yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes that happens. Mm-hmm. So yesterday's homework was what? Actually, you know who I don't see? I don't see Pretty. Is Pretty here? Anybody see Pretty? I do not. But come on. Maybe it's just me. Let's go. Pretty, you're here. Where are you, Pretty? I see you. I mean, I see you in the... Okay, she's not here yet. No, she is here, but she's not on video or logged in. Okay, so let's do this. Let's talk about the homework that we had last night. So, Guevara, what was the homework for last night? Uh, to have A1 of the script memorized um, and then to just read through uh, whatever market that you're going to go into the script of the market. You're going to so go become into. familiar, at least read it. And so, yes. and come, and by the way, any of you watching a presentation, um, if it's a presentation in a market that you have a script for, so that's going to be McGruff, it's going to be the no cost legal will kit, it's going to be the veteran and the credit union script for the U.S., go ahead and pull the script out and follow along and see how closely the, uh, the people you're observing, how close that they stick to the script. So knowing that A1 needed to be memorized and you have to talk straight into the camera and give your A1, are we prepared to do that this morning? Is everybody ready to go? Can, they all, can all of you do that? And be honest, if you can, it's okay. If you practice it, that's great. If you don't think you're quite ready to go, that's great too. Who is ready to go? Who could do it for us right now? Not one person is raising their hand. Okay, Bobby. Bobby, you, you, I'm not going to skip you, Bobby, for just a second. You're too confident. <laughs> I'll come back to you, though, if I got no one else. Seriously, I have 32 people in this room. Oh, there's one. Ronnie Reimer says, she. well, you have a question or do you think you're ready to do well, it? Well, both. I just had a real quick question because in reading mm -hmm. it, I just wanted it to, reading it out loud. So where it says, if response card, because it'll typically be a response card uh, situation from us, correct? In A1, right. it says, if response card, and then you put, you ask, do, do you get involved with your group? And then it says yes. name group. It, name. Well, what it's are not some... that it's typically, it's that's, mo I don't well, know if most... it's typically anymore. So yes, if it's a response card, then you ask that question. If it's not a response okay. card, then you go to the other. So one. what would be what would be a group name? I'm not familiar with any group name, so I just wanted to get a group name so that you I can just practice say VFW. getting it. VFW? VFW. Yeah, just use okay. that word for those okay. in the veteran market. So and that then, was your question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm kind of almost there. Uh, I was just, you know, I was practicing it. I just feel like I. Uh, I can keep practicing more. Maybe in a few minutes, okay. I can well, get we it can all close up. This more. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one more question is when you mm -hmm. ask, um, are you any member of any of the veteran organizations like BFW? How would you say AM uh, AM vets? Am, would you say AM vets or AM vets? AM vets. Am vets. Am vets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just wanted to say, you know, you want it to flow off. So I wanted to know how yeah, to absolutely. say it. Absolutely. I totally understand. Um, I get that. I may be able to get through it. I'm, of course, not as good as Bobby because, you know, He's our star student. <laughs> well, currently. <clears throat> but maybe I could, maybe I could do it. Um, okay. Maybe. Yeah. So and when we do that... it, are we going to be, are we going to be role playing with say you? So when the beginning, when we open up with the greeting and I'll say, hi, Sam, how's your day today? You know, and, and asking them questions about themselves. Are we going to be role playing or are we just going to be reading through the script? Well, uh, first of all, I hope you're not reading through the script because you all would have memorized it. Right. So you're just going to look into the camera the entire time. Right. right. Are gonna we going to give me your personal value statement? Oh, that yeah. was my other question. It's so uh, one here is taking the heat for the entire class, asking all the questions. So no one. Else I don't. I don't care. I hey, it. can I get you? Can I get your opinion about what I wrote for my personal value statement? <laughs> yeah, but not right now. Okay. Okay. After. okay. Okay. That's all. I love I'll it. go after. I'll go after Bobby. I'll give it a shot. I don't care. I'm not afraid. I'm not. Well, afraid. I'm going to select people at random now because no okay. one wants to volunteer. So let me ask you this: the class at large, you raise your hands, okay? If you agree with this statement, 
Sam, I'd rather practice for 15 minutes in a group of two or three to get feedback from each other before we have to do it in front of you or in front of the entire class. If you agree with that statement, raise your hand because this is a, a democracy, we're gonna vote. I facilitate, I don't instruct. So if I give the majority of people raise their hands, <laughs> Heck, I even have one smiling face for crying out loud. Your Layton's even clapping. All right, so if you didn't raise your hand, I have to assume that you're ready to go. Right, Rachel? Isn't that what that means? If you didn't raise your hand, that you're ready to go for in front of the entire class? We could keep practicing. Uh, but you didn't raise try. your hand, I Rachel. Think that... Rachel, oh, you didn't sorry. raise your hand, right? Oh, sorry, yeah. Well, no, no, if you didn't raise your hand, that's a vote for I can do this in front of the entire class, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm not ready as yet. Yeah. All right, that's fair. I don't have any issue with that. As soon as I have all the submissions, you can put your hands down now. As soon as I have all the submissions for the DRB, I will have you in the break rooms and you can practice. Okay, and then whoever's the best out of that break room as voted on by that team will then select the person who's going to have to do it. Because if you're the best in that group, well, I don't need you to do it for me, but I need someone else to do it, right? Does that make sense? Alexis, are you down with that? <laughs> Alexis is one of my students, like completely disinterested, like, yeah, whatever. No, on, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm just listening. Okay, so let's see how many DRB reports I have submitted. Today is the third. I have 18 out of 32. At least this class is consistent with every other class and that we take our time and spend quality time looking at that report before we submit it. So I'm going to put it in the chat again. Please, everybody, submit it right now so that I can get the attendance out to the leadership team. Did anybody else have an opportunity to work with their upline yesterday? You can put your hands down unless you're answering that particular question, because then I'll call on you and you'll go, oh, I forgot my hand was up. All right. So, Jennifer, did you work with your upline yesterday? Yes. Outstanding. And what happened? Um, well, people are just kind of changing in and out of our group just because a lot of people are busy right now. So we had Tyler, I believe his name is Tyler, and he was calling, uh, was it POS, right? Mm -hmm. He was calling that. So he had a lady on there for quite a bit. She didn't qualify for much because she was a smoker. She had had cancer, um, all kinds of things. But it did end up selling her that, I believe, the A17. A71. A71 for a small amount. It was like a $26 per month type thing. So it wasn't a huge sale, but he was able so to. So here's the this. interesting thing there is no A71 product that costs $26 a month. Hmm. I know she had an existing policy. Maybe someone from right. our group could help us, but he no, added. I think what he did is he probably sold her like $1,000 of life insurance and then bundled the A71. Okay. Because that's how you have to do it. You got to have some type of life insurance for that A71. But that's great. He sold right. something to her. Right. Okay. Poor guy. He works hard for it. <laughs> hey, well, sometimes that's what we have to do, right? Right. Lanisha, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Lanisha Paul. Yes, sir. <clears throat> my hands, my hand is up because um, you asked us the question if we wanted to um, go into uh, breakout rooms to go mm -hmm. over the scripts. Yeah, yeah, I'll do. I'll I'll do, do practice. practice. Uh, go ahead and mute. Go ahead and mute. Yeah, to practice your opening, your A one opening for whatever uh, presentation script you're going to use. Okay, so we're going to do that. Let's see, how many do I have now? I have 27 out of 32, so we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Sadly, no lineup again. Hopefully tonight, I did watch online the dashboard presentations. Oh, okay, thank you, Rhonda. We're gonna watch your presentation today as soon as you finish your A1, then we're gonna go through the presentation scripts so we see what the heck it is that people are doing. And, uh, we'll do some practice on that. We'll also look at Mobile Planet today to get an idea of how to use that. Jay, what can I do for you? Can you go over the personal value statement just real quick again? I don't know if I missed that. Or... 
So your personal, so as an example, my personal value statement is, my name is Samuel Sweet. I'm a third generation insurance director. My grandfather did it for Metropolitan Life. My father did it for Allstate. Now I do it for American Income. Uh, even though I thought I would never get into insurance because I didn't want to drive in people's rooms now or drive in people's homes. Now that I am able to work remotely, I join full force because I like the idea of helping people, particularly on the most difficult day of their lives. So that's my personal value statement. It kind of tells you in 30 seconds who I am, what experience I have, and whatever. I will help each one of you with your value statements after you give them to me, but I'm interested to see what your personal value statements are that you include in your A1 opening. Adam, what can I do for you? What, like which script is this A1 we're reading from? I was doing, presenting a couple different scripts last night. I'm not really sure which one it is. So you're in Canada, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's the presentation script. So when you get on Zoom for the first time, you can use either the McGruff or the No Cost Legal Will Kit. Whichever one you want to use. So what's it? Which one is it in the file? Like I don't think I understand your question. Which one is what? Um, it's P A V E T. But okay, he's in Canada. Oh, you're asking which? Okay, yeah. what you're the name in Canada. is? Canada. So in yeah. Canada, it's going to be attachment number seventeen or attachment number fifteen. Okay. And they're numbered 15, 17, 15 dash McGruff Child Safe Kit presentation, 17 dash no cost legal will kit presentation. So either one of those? Whichever one that you want to use, because in Canada, you, you can use both. Okay. Yeah. Bobby, what can we do for you? Uh, just real quick. Um, I submitted to you, sent to you my new email. I made a new email um, that was a, that has AIL in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you just you're still sending everything to my old email. So I transfer everything over to the new email already. Oh, awesome! That's great. I'm glad that you did that. Did you send me an email? I did from uh, from that email from the new email. I did. And you just did that, or you did that a while ago? Yesterday. Okay, hold on one second, because I thought I updated everything for people's. Uh, when I sent out the email, by the way, did anybody get the email from me last night saying the video had been uploaded to YouTube? Okay, so yes. you did get that? And Bobby, you got that on the old email address? Yes. Uh, the same thing happened with me as well. Okay, I may have updated later. So hold on, I didn't catch your name. Let me look at Bobby first. Bobby, I have you as uh, B-L-M-O-O-R-E-S-R dot A-I-L at gmail.com. That's correct. All right, and then who is that other individual? Uh, it's me, Ferris, F-A-R-E-S. Ferris. Yep. Ferris, I now have you as ferris.ail rep yep. at gmail.com. Yep, so I may have updated that after I had sent that last email out. But if I'm missing any emails, please let me know. Jennifer, what can we do for you? I had the same thing happen to me as well. Oh, okay. Jennifer, is, your email address is amori.insurance at gmail.com. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So that means tonight when I send the email out, hopefully it will go to everybody as it should. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's see how many submittals we have on the DRB, and then we can move forward. DRB, May 3rd, I have 29 out of 32. 29 out of 32. So I don't understand that. Diana Hung, are you there? Yes, I am. Sorry. I haven't received your submittal yet. Oh, um, I just sent it in a couple minutes ago. The link that you put in the chat, right? Yeah. Yeah, did, I submitted it. <laughs> did you get an email back saying you successfully submitted it? Um, I have to check. Yeah, I only ask because I don't see it. I see the one from yesterday, but I don't see the one from today. All right, everybody, if you haven't do it, please uh, get I'll that in it. as soon as possible. Now, I'm going to sign you automatically to breakout rooms, and I'm, we're going to do this for about 15 minutes because I don't think it should take very long. What I want to have happen is when you go into the breakout rooms, okay. you're going to do it one by one. Your camera is going to be on. You're going to look into the camera, and you're going to give your A1 opening. 
And then when you say, hey, let me, I'm going to share my desktop or share my screen, let me know when you can see it, then you're done. Your teammates or your roommates rather should give you feedback. And then when you're all completed, uh, each one of you should vote on who the number one person is in that room. Okay. And then I'm going to bring all of you back. So we're going to do it. Actually, let's see here. If I put six people into a room, that's six, six times three is 18. So I'll bring all of you back at 10 minutes to the top of the hour. I think all of you should be able to get it done in that time frame. Is that enough time for you all to get through it and get feedback from each other? Okay. Yes, Michael, what can I do for you? Uh, yeah, after we do um, this breakout room, I'm going to have to step away for about an hour. Um, my, I just have to take my son to a doctor's appointment. Um, is that okay? Yeah, of course. That's why okay. I just come back. <laughs> of course, of course. I just wanted to right. communicate. That's all. Thanks. All right, everybody. The breakout rooms are open. Please join them and do your practice of your A1. Everybody, we are back. So <clears throat> we want to find out who's going to do this for us. Let's go with Leighton Wilson. Who is the best person in your room? Leighton, I cannot hear you. So I don't think you were the best person. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You got that right. I uh, we it was kind of a tie between Bobby and Diana. All right, Diana. Pick somebody no. to give the A1 for us. No. Okay, fine. <laughs> Diana. Um, but Bobby was better, to be honest. So Okay, I appreciate Diana, that. Diana, Diana, I need Diana, you to pick somebody. You. All right, I'll 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 talk to uh, Dewey. Dewey, go ahead Let's and give us your A1, please. Oh, wait, am I supposed to do it? No, Dewey is. Oh, Dewey, let's go. Is Dewey there? No, I, I was no good at that. Not yet. All right, Dewey, here we go. It's all on you. Hello, my name is Dewey. I'm with American Income Life, and we're the company that handles permanent benefits for all the veteran service organizations across the country. How, how are you doing today? I am well. Uh, now, is this the first time you've uh, met with someone virtually or in, um, for your benefits? Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, are you uh, currently a member of the veteran service organizations like VFW, AMBETS, American Legion? I am a member of the VFW. Excellent. Uh, well, I want to personally thank you for your service. I don't think that's heard near enough. And I am in the insurance industry about a year and a half, and I've handled uh, property and casualty, life and health. And I really like helping people and helping others with their benefits because it's very important for themselves and their family. Okay. Well, it needs a lot of practice. I'm working on it. Are you done? Do we? Yes. Are you done? Yeah, how far did you want me to go on the... <clears throat> well, I wanted you to do the A1. Did you finish the A1? That's the A1 for the veteran presentation. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Sky Warren, on a scale of one to 10, what would you give Dewey? Um, probably like a five or six. Five or six out of ten. Rhonda Morris, what would you give Dewey? Uh, probably about a four, but I think a lot of us are be in that area. Okay, <clears throat> so a four or six, that's fine. It's day three, right? We're trying to learn yeah. how to do it. <clears throat> Dewey, what would you give yourself on a scale of one to 10? I was thinking more of a two or three, actually. But How many times did you practice this last night? I've 
uh, just a few times last night. Okay. So you start off by immediately by saying, hey, my name is, you didn't do any connection with me whatsoever, did you? Do you know anything about me other than I'm a member of the VFW? Um, no. So the only reason I bring it up to you is it's really important to connect with the client because if you turn your camera off, they're no longer going to connect with you mm -hmm. other than what you're going to say. And we'll find out later how critical that becomes uh, in terms of how they're relating to what you're saying, your voice, your imitation, your tonality, all the rest of that. However, specific to when you're on camera, you've got to look into the camera. You can't read something off to the side because it just doesn't build credibility. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So Dewey, please pick somebody to do their A1. Tiffany was excellent. Then why would you pick Tiffany if she was excellent? No, I'm just kidding. That's fine. She, Tiffany, knows, she knows it. <laughs> go ahead and give us your A1. Oh, okay. Good morning, Sam. How are you doing this morning? I'm um, doing okay. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Did you do anything fun or interesting this morning so far? No, I teach a class with a bunch of adult students, and sometimes it's challenging, and sometimes it's really great. So far, it's been really great, so I'm pretty happy. That sounds like a solid morning, then. Mm -hmm. So again, my name is Tiffany. I appreciate you taking a little bit of time with me this morning to go over this. I'm with American Life Income. We're the company that handles the permanent benefits for all of the veteran service uh, organizations across the country. My um, my papa and my husband's grandpa were actually veterans. So this is really near and dear to my heart to be able to help you and go over this with you. Now, I see that you're part of the VFW. Are you really involved with them? Uh, no, I just pay the dues. <clears throat> I don't like going to their meetings because all I do is sit around and, you know, tell the war stories. I'm not that interested in that. Sorry to hear that. I know they do do a lot of really great things for the community as well. So. I appreciate that the, the service is there for you if you need it. Um, mm -hmm. And on that note, I don't think that the veterans hear it enough. And I really want to thank you for your service. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now so you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at. So just mm -hmm. let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. Uh, are you looking at the camera or are you looking at me? I keep looking at you. Mm hmm so everybody, that's not the end of the world, right? If you're looking off the screen, you're looking a little bit away. But if you're going to do that, because that's how most of us like to have a conversation with somebody, we want to get that visual communication because it's probably more important than even what you're saying. You need to look up into the camera once in a while. I would prefer that 100% of the time for the one, all you do is look at that little black dot. And then when you get to the point saying, hey, I'm about to share my screen with you, let me know when you can see it. Then you look away and turn your camera off and then share your screen. Yeah, that's great. I like how you built the personal value statement in. It wasn't necessarily about you, but it was about somebody else, which tells us why you're invested in this role. So, uh, Diana, what score would you give her? Um, I would say maybe a seven or 7.5, okay. just because it looks a bit like lengthy. It was a bit lengthy? Yeah, but you, she was very friendly, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, who is she going to pick next? Who is next, Tiffany? I'm going to pick to pick my practice partner from yesterday. Bobby, it's your turn. Uh, the class is like, oh, yeah, Bobby, save us out of this. All right, Bobby, let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. Go, Bobby. <laughs> I would I, I would give you a nine, by the way, Tiffany. I think that was great. That was that was almost conversationally. Mm hmm. All right. Good morning, Sam. How are you this morning? I'm well. How are you? <clears throat> Doing all right. Thank you for asking. Uh, how's the weather out there in California these days? It's supposed to rain later today, but so far uh, this week has been pretty nice. Okay. All right. Nothing wrong with that. Well, as you know, my name is Bobby. I'm with American Income Life. Uh, we are the company that handles all the permanent benefits of the service veteran service organizations across the country. 
And as a veteran myself, I think it's extremely important that all of our beloved veterans get all of the benefits that is afforded to them. So uh, is this the first time anyone has contacted you virtually? Yes. It is? Okay, no worries. That's what I'm here for, to make sure you get all the benefits that you are deserved. Also, I see that you're a member of the VFW. Uh, do you get involved with them at all? I just pay my union dues, that's all. Okay, nothing wrong with that. I actually I absolutely love and respect what they do for our veterans and their families. So just to have it there for the veterans is a great thing. Also, so uh, as a veteran, I would like to thank you, one veteran to another, for your service. Sometimes I think we didn't hear that enough, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. All righty, let's get into this thing. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you, and if you can let me know when you see it, that would be a great help. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Johnny Spinner, what score would you give Bobby? It's hard. <clears throat> What's that? Like, like 9.2. 9.2. 9 that's, that's really hard, though, to stare at that when yeah. I can't see you. Yeah, it's very hard. <clears throat> but if you do it, it carries a lot more weight than if you look at my picture. Right. The So I do it all the time and it's frustrating to me because I teach. Right. So I have a class and I have to look at you all and I can I, my other computers up so I can see myself looking away. And then when I do this, I can see myself the corner of my eye. What I'm going to get is a teleprompter where the camera shoots through the mirror and I can see the screen, but it looks like I'm looking at you. That's my next step. But who cares about that? What For you all, if you don't look at the camera initially, again, it's not the end of the world. This is only things that are going to help you. I promise you, it's only going to help. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if you're going to speak for somebody for the first time, and you're in person, and you never look at them. Uh, Ronnie, if I were to meet you in person, but I never looked at you while we're talking, what would you think? Um, that you had some issues <laughs> that you weren't really interested in our conversation. <laughs> right. So I want everyone to get used to the idea of looking into that lens, at least for the a minute, two minutes, whatever it is you're doing the opening. Now, once you're released and once you're doing your own thing, you're going to do whatever you want. But if I were to sit in on a presentation and the whole time I saw somebody with their camera on looking away at their computer screen, I'm going to tell them they're not as engaged. That will affect close rate. That is a guaranteed known fact. If you don't communicate and build rapport, your close rate won't be as high as you want it to be. People buy from people they like, people that they feel comfortable with, people they want to speak with. If you're not connecting, that doesn't happen. Tiffany, I did want to add one thing. I would have given you a five. Now, everyone's going to say, oh, my gosh, well, we said nine point whatever. We thought you did good. You did a great job, except for one personal pet peeve that I have. Do you ha can you guess what that is? No. Nope. What is know. the name of the company you work for? American Life Income. No. American Income Life Income. American Income oh, I said Life. I it backwards. <laughs> so well, just the... Uh, just to be clear, okay. <laughs> most of us say just American income. Okay. You don't have to say the American income life. I mean, yes, that is our formal name. We're a wholly owned subsidiary division of Globe Life, but most people just shorten it to American income. Okay. But other than that, I thought you did well. Bobby, you did fine. I didn't expect you to do any less. Bobby, who are you going to pick as our next candidate? I'm going to go with Sierra. All right, Sierra, let's go. Give us your A1 opening, please. I already knew you were going to pick me. Oh, well, you it's did. Not, it's terrible. So um, stick with me. I love public humiliation. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. Sorry. Um, I'm not really that prepared to do it, to be oh, honest. Hold on a second. I, I'm going to take excerpts of every class and put a collage mm -hmm. together. I think... <laughs> If I'm going to market this class, I'm going to take that sentence and Sierra's smiling face and put that up there. I love public humiliation. All right. Uh, apologize. All right, Sierra, go ahead. Give us your A1. All right. Hi, Sam. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good. Are you going to be watching that game later today? Well, I saw my, my, lawyers, my Warriors lose last night against the Lakers, so 
I'll probably, if there's a game on, I'll watch it though. Fair enough. I'll be watching too. My name is Sierra. I will be with, eh, okay, one sec. My name is Sierra. I'm with American Income Life Insurance. We are the company that handles the permanent benefits for all the veteran services across the country. Um, my personal goal, I love my family and I know you love yours too. So I just want to make sure that you understand your benefits. Um, do you get involved with the VFW? No. Oh, that's unfortunate. I hear they throw really great Christmas parties. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I just want to thank you again. I don't thank the veterans here that enough, um, but thank you so much for your service. Now, once you see my screen, let me know. Okay, great. So uh, let's go to uh, Bobby. What score would you give her, Bobby? One to a 10. Um, a five. Okay. What score would you give yourself, Sarah? A two. A two? Well, at least you did it. I mean, that's sort of like taking the SATs when we were allowed to back in the day. Just signing your name, you got 400 points, right? So, Sierra, here's the thing. What is your personal value statement? I've been, I switched it like eight times. I really, honestly, one of them was to help people understand their benefits and be there for families when they're in need. Another mm -hmm. one was to protect families and help them understand mm -hmm. their benefits and follow through mm -hmm. with support in times of need. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to make it more personal by mentioning how I love my family. So I want to make sure that since I know you love yours, that here I am to help your family. Okay. But I'm switching it. I don't, I have not picked one. Don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. Have you ever experienced loss? Yes. What did you lose? Or whom did you lose? Um, I mean, a lot of people, but I mean, you can say my grandpa. Were you close? Yeah. And when your grandfather died, what did that mean to the family? It was devastating and it still is. Is there, was there any insurance involved or did you have to, your family have to pay for everything on your own? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Do you think it was financially uh, difficult for your parents or whoever had to pay for the funeral? Mm, probably. I mean, it's an expense that you really don't want to pull out of your pocket in general, so... Well, sure, no one wants to pay for anything they don't have to, but we all know we're going to die, right? So if you've experienced loss, you know what it's like to go through the emotional upheaval of that loss, correct? Right. Okay, so now you're starting to get, at least for you, the beginnings of a personal value statement, right? Yeah, so what would you recommend? Well, I mean, for any of us, if you don't have anything in particular, or if you're, you're professional career isn't very long, your tenure working in business isn't very long, you can pivot to a personal situation where you've experienced loss. So in the case of Sierra, she says, okay, I've experienced loss. Hey, I work with American income because I've seen what families have to go through. I've seen it personally because when we lost my grandfather, there was a huge impact on our life. And because you're a veteran, I like the idea of making sure that you and your family are taken care of on the most difficult day of their life when you pass. That sounds a lot better. Well, it's not that it needs to sound better. It's just that it's giving you something to think about and use potentially as opposed to I love my family. I love your family is great, but it's not connecting with me as the client. You've got to say something about yourself that connects with the client. The value statement is building credibility about you. So the moment you say something like that, you're not talking about sales. You're not talking about upselling. You're not talking about anything other than making sure that we're taken care of. Now, my mindset as a client is, okay, you're going to help me through this process and you're going to issue me benefits. That's, that's what the phone call was. So as you go through this entire thing, you never talk about sales. You never talk about closing. You never talk about any of those things. And the reality then becomes the credibility that you're bringing <laughs> to the table is huge. More people are likely going to be engaged enough with you to go ahead and accept the recommendation. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I'll work on it. Okay, Sarah, let's pick somebody else, please. Who are you going to pick? Ray. Ray. Ray Kalina. All right, Ray, <laughs> here we go. Betrayed by the person in my own room. That's crazy. That's crazy. Betrayed. All right. 
Hey, Sam. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm oh, living the dream, brother, every day. Getting uh, the day started or just ending? No, it's about 1020 here, so the day's just getting going. Okay, okay. So my name's Ray Kalina. I'm with American Income. We are the company that handles the permanent benefits for all the veteran service organizations across the country. I just want to start off by saying thank you for your service. My brother is in the Navy, and I know from experience that you guys don't hear that enough. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. My pleasure. Now, is this the first time someone has either met with you virtually or in person? Yeah, this is the first time. First time. And are you involved with any of the veteran organizations such as VFW, AMVETS, or the American Legion? No. No? All right. No worries. I mean, I hear they throw a good Christmas party, but maybe you'll get there one day. I uh, just want to, again, say we appreciate what you do for our country. Thank you for your service. Now, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Let me know when you can see that, all right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, what score would you give Ray? I give him a five. He seemed personable, but he repeated himself a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Rhonda, what score the would game. you give Ray? Rhonda, are you there? No, Rhonda. Mia, what score no, would you I'm give there. Ray? Rhonda, what score would you give Ray? I, I, I'm on the same ink that uh, I probably about a five again, just okay. because he had um, repeated himself, but he was very personable. Mia, what score would you give Ray? Um, I would say a five as well. A five as well. So yeah, at least I'm consistent. You were good. Yeah, you were consistent. So Ray, you personable. can connect. <clears throat> Pardon me. Ray, you can connect with people. That's obvious. But what is your personal value statement? That's the whole thing I've been struggling with. I don't even have a brother in the Navy. I made it up. <laughs> okay. So here, all right. So the, no problem. <clears throat> Here's one thing well, I want. I figured let me throw the thank you in there to see, but I know what I, I switched to. I know, but that's okay. all I had for the we so were struggling first, with personal values our whole group. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, please, I don't need anybody or I don't want anybody. Please do not make things up. Not in your personal value statement, not in any of the stories that you tell. Nowhere in the pitch should you do that. And the reason why, I've seen students like you, Ray, that say, okay, I'm going to make this up. It sounds good. And it does sound good. And then over the course of times, they make up other things. And then they make up other things. And all of a sudden, the story they're telling is nowhere close to reality. And then <clears throat> they start doing things because they're making shortcuts because they've seen it as okay. So what I'm saying is basically veracity is, is kind of sacred and crucial and it's a slippery slope. There's no need to make anything up. So Ray, have you ever experienced loss in your life? Uh, Yeah, I just had what a friend pass away last week, actually, now that I think about it. So you had a friend that passed away and you yeah. know the impact of the family. Yeah, they're doing the whole uh, cremation and celebration of life now. I'm sure that's that's being that's a killer on them right now. I'm sure. Right. So in your best case scenario, you would want to have a situation where they're not going to have to spend the money out of their own pocket, correct? Right. So there you go. You have a perfect, per perfect, <laughs> perfect, perfect <clears throat> potential for a value statement for yourself, a personal one, right? Say, hey, I just experienced loss. And one of the things I want to do is make sure that the folks I work with, in this case, it's veterans, that their families don't have to go through what my friend's family's having to go through. And you, you do don't talk about life insurance and personal value statement. Really what, you, what you talk about is uh, what you're going to do for them, issue them these benefits. Okay. Appreciate you. So, Ray, let's pick the last person that we're going to do today. <clears throat> ah, the tables have turned. Let me, let me take a look. I'm going to scour. I'm going to go with Johnny Spinner. Johnny Spinner. It's just a great name. Hey, All right, Johnny, is, you're is, on is deck. Let's go. Hi, Sam. How are you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. Uh, my name is Johnny. I am with American Income uh, Life. 
Uh, we are the company that handles permanent benefits for all veteran service organizations across the country. Uh, you know, my papa, he's a veteran. Um, so, so this really hits home for me, you know, giving you guys benefits. Um, now, is this the first time someone's met with you either in person or virtually? Yes. It is? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Are you a current member of any uh, veteran service organization like the VFW, uh, AMVETS, or American Legion? No. No? Okay. Well, I would recommend it. You know, they, they have a lot of fun over there. Um, well, thank you for your service uh, and for our country. I do think veterans don't hear that enough. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, go ahead and let me know when you can uh, see it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Spinner. Let's go to Preeti. Preeti, what score would you give Johnny? One to a 10, a 10 being the highest. I would say a five. A five, okay. John Cameron, what score would you give Johnny? A five. Johnny, what score would you give yourself? Uh, 2.4. <laughs> Okay, 2.4. So you started to tell us a little bit about your, uh, was your brother? Is that who was in the service? No, my papa. Your pop, okay. Grandpa, grandpa, yeah. Your grandfather was in the service. Okay, awesome. And you feel like you want to make sure that all the veterans are taken care of? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I would just say that a little bit more, but you're reading the script, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you just have to memorize that opening. Okay, right. so Johnny, let's do this as an experiment. Let me put you on my speaker. All right, Johnny, so look into the camera <clears throat> and don't read a script. Don't read anything. Just introduce yourself to me and tell me what we're about to do. Don't don't look at anything else but the camera. Okay. Um, like like so, you want me to like do the actual thing or, or what no i want you to, no don't look at the script don't read the script just introduce yourself give me whatever you think your personal value statement is and let me know when we're ready to go so don't read the okay. script just look in the camera introduce yourself. it's just like you're meeting one of the guys on the campus for the first time all right all right um hi my name is uh johnny spinner um you know my my papa served in the uh the military. Um, so I want to make sure he gets all the benefits um, that he should receive. Is that is that too short, too long? <laughs> well, so here's what I would do. So we'll be a little different. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Hey, Johnny, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks so much. I'm glad that we can meet today. I just want to let you know that what we're going to go through today in just a minute, but first I want to chat with you a little bit. My father was in the service just like you. He was in the Army. What branch were you in? Uh, Navy SEALs. You were in the Navy SEAL? Oh, okay. Yeah, my my father wasn't a Navy SEAL, but he was in military intelligence with uh, the military. What I liked about it is that when he got out, he did get some benefits, but he didn't get as many as he probably should have. And so now I work with American Income to ensure that all the veterans I come in contact with receive the benefits to which they're entitled. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. So I had a personal point, not a value statement, a personal point in there. I didn't follow the script, but I just did an opening. If that's all you do and you don't follow the script, I'm okay with that, but I want you to hit the high points. Make sure you use the name of the company, give me your personal value statement, and then say what you're about to do. I love it if you follow the script completely, but what's more important to me is you have to feel comfortable. So what I'm noticing in everybody, and not just you, Johnny, thanks a lot for participating. What I notice in everybody is you're not comfortable yet because you're thinking in your minds, I got to memorize it. It was supposed to be homework. I didn't get a chance to do it last night. I only practiced twice. I'm not interested <clears throat> in making you recite the opening word for word. There's other parts of the script that I need you to follow word for word. There's a lot of reasons for that. But in the opening, it's about your level of comfort. Of all the people who did it today, who thinks Bobby was the most comfortable? Raise your hand. Okay, so he was the most comfortable. Some of us thought that anyway. <laughs> Bobby doesn't even raise his own hand. But I felt that he was probably the most comfortable. After that, it's probably Tiffany. 
except she didn't know the name of the company. That's okay. We make mistakes, right? But it's all about your comfort, okay? If you're not comfortable having a conversation, let me give you an example. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Sam, and I am the instructor for uh, the uh, AO International New Agent Class 23-0 nine. I want to I, I welcome everybody here today, and I'd like each one of you to um, say your name and um, tell me where you're from, and uh, and then we'll go in alphabetical order, okay? So we're going to start with Adam Abel. Now, was I comfortable? Did I come across as comfortable? No. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And yet I meet every class for the first time. In my mind, it's because I have practice. So I probably can exude a little bit of confidence. I'm also in control, right? I'm in control of the class to a certain extent. I can mute you. I can stop. I can pause whenever I want. So that's part of it. You got to be comfortable. The other part is you are in control. The client's not, unless you cede control to the client. So I want all of you as homework tonight is practice your A1. And again, I don't care if you follow it word for word, but I want you to be comfortable enough so in the morning when you do this, you can look right into the camera and have a conversation with me. Okay? Does that make sense to you, Jay? Yes, have it does. Have a conversation. Yep. It's not like you're going out to dinner with friends. It's easy for you to chat. You know the sense that I get that you all are newly engaged and you're meeting your in-law, potential in-laws for the first time. That's that's the sense I'm getting. It's like, okay, I know I'm going to say this right. I don't want to say anything wrong. Relax. You're in control. Okay. You're in control. Rhonda, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Absolutely. I'm excited. I want to do it. <laughs> all right you mean you want to do it right now and yeah. do it with us yeah. okay if you think yeah. that's she the was case. she was going to be so, our volunteer <laughs> all right was, oh because you, everyone thought you did it the best okay Rhonda if you are at least a nine or above then we don't need to do any more today well I, I don't know I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be positive <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna be positive hi Sam how right. are you? I am well how are you I'm excellent. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rhonda Morris and I work, I'm with American Income. Uh, the reason that I'm calling you today is I'm inquiring because yourself or a family member has actually reached out to us uh, with respects to our insurance and the benefits that they provide. One of the things that um, I'm curious about uh, are when you have a, have you ever been in that situation where you've had a prescription issue because you didn't have coverage um, because you've been, you've been ill and off work and haven't had the uh, uh, ability to, to pay for that. We do have uh, uh, insurance that will cover that. I have found in my own life, my, my father was very ill and being off work that has caused a hardship for us. So um, having this extra insurance coverage has really been a benefit and it does pay past what the provincial level would actually uh, give to us. Um, Globe Life and American Income are actually sister companies. They work together hand in hand. And I have been asked via the service department to follow up if you have any questions about our benefits or and provide per personal service regarding any of that. Anyways, uh, any questions with respect to that at this particular point? No. No questions. Okay, so um, now, unfortunately, I don't have, I, I took the wrong one, but anyways, you get the idea. <laughs> I'm done <laughs> for right now. So, okay, first of all, are you in Canada or in the U.S.? I'm in Canada, hence the okay. reason the provincial portion of it. Okay, that's what I thought, but we were doing the opening to a presentation. I know, I know, the... I know, I know. Okay, no. <laughs> so okay never mind I've gotta give you the nine only because you made the effort 
Thank you. Okay. You well, made the you effort. So I mean, you were way over here. I, I don't know what you were doing, but that's okay. You made the effort. I appreciate that. And so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to take an early break because we've got a lot of stuff to get through in terms of scripts today. So I'd like everybody to come back at a quarter to the top of the hour. Okay, everybody? <laughs> We are back. Let's get those cameras on. <clears throat> Who do we got? We got a few people here and there. Ferris, are you there? Kenyon, are you there? Patty Brazil, Dewey, Reedy, and Layton. Let me pin Layton. Layton. Layton, what is that thing behind you, behind your right shoulder on the shelf there? Is that a wine bottle? That is, yeah. Sorry, my mom likes to decorate it. I'm staying with her right now. Oh, no worries. I was just curious what it was. I couldn't tell if it was, you know, like a the handle yeah, no, of the sword clarify. or something. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, sherry. And okay. I, I think it's I think it's decoration. All right, no even... worries. Yeah. All right, everybody. <clears throat> now that we're back, we're going to watch a video of an actual presentation given by Andrew Haskins, who's the executive director of PR. His team is the team that develops HP Pro, which is the tool that we were using yesterday. And he his team is responsible for generating a lot of the activities with the veteran service organizations, the unions, things of that nature. We have a whole cadre of people who do interaction with those folks to generate the leads in the first place. So I'm going to go and share my screen. We're going to watch this for a little bit. It is a veteran presentation. So even though you're in Canada, I want you to open the veteran presentation and follow along. So the Canadian presentations are a little bit different in the beginning, but what I want you to do is follow the veteran so you understand the flow and you can see what he's doing with a client. Has anybody actually seen a presentation and been able to see what the client sees? Or have you just kind of watched it over a shoulder or listened to it? All right, so by show of hands, has anybody seen a presentation where you've seen what the client sees? Okay, a couple of you, four of you, five of you. Okay, so that's good. So here we're going to see a presentation where we're going to see exactly what the client experiences. It's the veteran presentation. When we're done, we're going to ask for some feedback, and then I'm going to go through all the scripts for the presentations for all four different markets, all right? Does anybody have any questions? Ferris, your hand is up. Do you have a question or was that an answer from before? No, 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 it was an answer from before. Okay, gotcha. That being the case. All right, there we go. We just listened to a presentation for the veteran market with the executive director himself, Andrew Haskins. So hopefully we followed along with that because the way the, the rest of the presentations go, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the veteran presentation <clears throat> and we're going to look at it together and I'll ask for feedback from people as we go through this. So everyone, pre, please bring up number four, attachment number four, which is the veterans presentation scripts. Let me share my screen and here it is. So when we first start the veteran presentation script, we're going through this and we do the opening. So the A1 through A2, that's what I wanted you to do. Practice, get familiar, become conversational and continue to move forward. Once that done, is done, you bring up a letter. <clears throat> uh, Alex Brent, do you remember Andrew bringing up the letter? Yeah, I'm sorry. My friend. That's okay. <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry about it. Uh, so um, Tiffany, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, he did. Okay, so you got that, right? So yeah. here we are. We're bringing up the letter after we've had the very first conversation saying, hey, you know, here's who I am. Here's my personal value statement or whatever. Did we hear him give a personal value statement, Tiffany? Um, I remember him being very conversational and creating yeah. the rapport with him before right. he pulled it up. So his personal value statement, he didn't really get into, did he? 
No, not particularly. No. It's because one, he's really comfortable and he knows how to just have a conversation. And he's done plenty of these presentations. So I teach the personal value statement so you can begin to build credibility right off the bat. And the reason, one of the reasons for that is if they ask you a question, you may not know the answer because you haven't done it very often. But if they were to ask him a question of any kind, he can roll with it because he has done so many. Does that make sense? So that's why we have that in there. And then in the script here in A2, it talks about, hey, this is a copy letter you received. And my job is simple. Number one, number two, and number three, right? At the end, there is a report form that goes back to the VSO. So there is a report form that I'll show you in HP Pro. Then we've added at the start of page two, do you know why the VSOs want to ensure you are enrolled today? Now, whatever they say, you say exactly. If they don't know, say, hey, not a problem. If they say anything, you say, hey, exactly, and then give the reasons. Number one and number two, you want to make sure something's taken care of before it happens and ensure they all get a chance to be seen. Then you go into number three. So for us on the veteran market, there is a new, well, it's relatively new, it's two weeks old. It is what we call a survey. So that survey was not there before, and they just added it for us. And it's very, very helpful. Let's see if I can't bring it up. It's uh, extraordinarily helpful. So I want to show everybody what that looks like. So I'm going to go to other. I'm creating this. You can follow along with me in HP Pro, your own HP Pro. You can log in. What I'm doing is a veteran presentation type, bringing up a return card, SGMAD, and the group name, and then I say start presentation. So let me show you what that looks like right now. So here I am in the veterans presentation. The very first thing they go into now is what's called the LWTPS. So when I display that, that's the last will and testament preparation survey. So this is new. We're added, we've added this. <clears throat> so Andrew, his recording is from a year and a half ago. So things have progressed since then. I'm trying to get a new version. And we'll have that out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But now, if we go back to the presentation right here, we're saying, let's start with a quick survey. This is the survey, and we're clicking on this thing right here, the LWTPS for veteran. We click on display, this survey will come up. And then we're gonna fill out all the fields based on the client's responses. The reason that this is important, the reason that they do this survey, and a lot of our markets now are getting this survey done, is because the information from the survey will then flow to every other part of the presentation and you'll have a lot of stuff already populated, okay? So we're in here, we're gonna ask questions about their VA life insurance coverage. That's right here. Do you have coverage? And if you do, is it the um, Veterans Group Life Insurance or is it the Veteran Affairs Life Insurance? Because there's two different kinds or if they have no coverage. So you're filling all of this out and then you're breaking down their insurance. So let's say you fill that out and then you come in here to their insurance. When you click on this, this screen will pop up and then you just put in the information. If they don't have any, you have to put zeros in everywhere, okay? So then you fill all of this out with all the information. If they own, then you're gonna put in the information here. If they rent, do not put any information in there. Okay, if you do, it's gonna give you an error. So just put information in here only if they own. You're gonna fill out the rest of this and keep going down. And then we get finished with all the other insurance. And then we're going to save down here. Well, first of all, we're gonna click complete. And once we click complete, it'll have a save button and it will have a recommendations button. Do not click on the recommendations, right? Do not show recommendations. And the reason for that is it's confusing to you and the client what it's actually telling you to do. So just ignore it. Just go ahead and click on save or click on the complete button and then roll into the AD&D certificate. So we close that. The next thing here is the AD&D certificate. That will come up. It will be populated for us uh, with the information on the return card. As we move forward, if it's a PAVET in the veteran market, it will come up with the $2,000 accidental death and dismemberment certificate. So then we go through that, and then we do the family information guide. So as we saw in the Andrew Haskins video, this document, 
So this document now is nowhere, long, nowhere near as long as it used to be. For all of us in every other market, you have a document similar to this. It's called the Family Information Guide. It doesn't have, obviously, the veterans and their families, but you can fill out the rest of that. When you click on it in the veterans market, you talk about this section here with the script, and then you go into the vital statistics. If you filled out the survey, then the vital statistics will be there as well as the spouse information. What we're doing at this point is we are, uh, we started on page five, now we're, I'm sorry, A5 on page three, then we go to page four, we're verifying information. Because if the survey is done correctly, all of this will be in here. However, if their survey wasn't done or you <clears throat> forgot or something is not correct, you need to enter the information. Very crucial that the information is ending up here. What you would do is click on this pencil and you would add or do whatever information. And when you're done with this section, everything you can fill out is highlighted in gray. Anything that's not in gray, you can't fill out. You would click the floppy disk to save it. That's really important because if you do not save it and anything happens to your HP Pro, none of that information is available to you. Okay, so for all of you, no matter what market you're in, anytime you're filling out something on behalf of the client and there's a pencil, you need to click the floppy disk as soon as that section is done to ensure that all the data is protected. Then we're going to do the spouse and then the veterans information. So we're going to do this one, this one, and the veterans information. Now we have the veterans to be notified. So we then go down here and we say, hey, so the veteran service groups found it can be difficult for civilians to work at the VA, et cetera, et cetera. You start to list everybody in here. As you list them in here, if you come down, or I'm sorry, if you click on this pencil, notice in the lower right hand corner, you have a plus symbol. So for all of you, whenever you're listing people to be notified, emergency contacts, anything like that, you're not limited to the number that's shown on the screen. If I hit that plus symbol, you'll see I now go to five. If I hit it again, I go to six. I hit it again, I go to seven. You can put in as many as you wish. So if I'm speaking to a veteran as an example, and they belong to a veteran service organization like the VFW, and they have a lot of people they know, I'm just going to add them all in here, right? Why not? Add them all in here so they can get their benefits as well as be contacted if anything happens. If I'm in Canada and I'm in the McGruff, it won't be veterans to be notified, it would be other people, but you would still have the same concept that if I'm talking to a family that has a child, typically they know other families with children and I'm gonna to wanna to add as many as I possibly can so they can all receive the benefits of the McGruff Child Safe Kit. All right, so then we have the people to be notified uh, here. So we go to the next page, we click on there. Now we're doing people to be notified. So remember in the veterans, we did the person themselves or the veteran, we did their spouse, and then we did the veterans to be notified. Now we want to talk about the people to be notified in the event of emergency. Whenever, whatever market you're in, you don't want to list the spouse as the main contact. So if somebody is single, no problem. Whoever they're going to list is fine. If they're married or have a significant other, you should have put it over here in the spouse vital statistics. So we call it a spouse, but they're gonna tell us what their status is. We don't fill that in. If you notice the gray is only name, first name, last name, date of birth and place of birth. It doesn't matter to us if they're married, separated, living together, not living together, it doesn't matter. If they're their significant other, that's where you wanna put this information. So in my mind, I wish they would change this to significant other, but they didn't. So anyway, once that's done and you come back to this page here, you wouldn't put, you know, if you're John and you're married to Julie, you wouldn't put Julie here because what you would say is, let me go back to the script here, you know, together we're going to list the nine. So if something happens to the both of you, like a car accident, who's going to take care of all your arrangements? So if they're single, no problem, but if they're married or have a significant other, you want to assume that both of them died by uh, an accident of some type, now who's the next person to be contacted? And if they say they're kids, that's great. Just verify the kids are old enough, right? Contacting your kid is not going to make a whole lot of sense. So then you fill all of this out. Now, again, if I click on the pencil, I can come down here and I can keep adding names. So they give me all the people in their family, whether it's immediate family, extended family, whatever they feel is family that should be notified. We want to put this in here. 
keep in mind, it's not for the husband, not for the wife. It's for whoever's going to take care of the affairs afterward. And what I usually say, if they go, well, why do we need all these people? It's like, well, we don't know who's going to have to take care of your household effects, anything. So what we have been told to do by the VSOs is give you the opportunity to list everybody in there. So no matter who is the person that's going to take care of your affairs after you pass away, they'll have all the contact information that they need all in one spot. Does that make sense to you, Bobby? You got to speak to me. I can't see you. I have no idea where you're at. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out. So do the people be notified and then I keep saying here again, anything that's listed in yellow with red text is either information for you or instructions for you to do something. So you can click more by, I'm sorry, you can list more people by clicking on plus. Emergency contacts, same concept. You have a spot for five, but if I uh, save this one, or no, it's part of that. So if I click on that, I can get a plus symbol and I can add more down here. So put in as many as you can, because these are all potential referrals or sponsored uh, people or what we call plus leads. OK, then we get through this page here. We go to the next page, which is page five. And then we go through financial institution, last will and testament. You heard about uh, uh, Andrew was talking about that a little bit. We're just alluding to it. We're asking question. Hey, do you have one? If not, I'll go over that sooner. Any life insurance policies? And then I hit the next page, digital accounts, and now funeral instructions. So now I'm down here, verify any of the information on whether they want burial, cremation, or mausoleum, display the freedom of choice. So like, hey, have you thought about, did you want to be buried or cremated? They say, hey, I want to be cremated. So you click on that. You click on cremated. You hit save. And then the next thing you do is you come down here. And a lot of people forget, for all of the family information guys, it's this little tiny little it says FOC on it. You can barely see it. <clears throat> but if you click on that, then the freedom of choice certificate comes up. What I want all of you to do is scroll down so that your name shows up here. Yeah, it's really powerful when it's your name on there. It's like, oh, you're the one that's given it to me. Yeah. They psychologically feel more connected if you scroll down and show them your name. Okay. So you've done that, you've shown your name, and then you go through this part of the information about what the VSOs have set up for the freedom of choice. Then you're going to download the family information guide. This is really important. So you're going to click off anywhere else. And when you're done, you're going to come up here and you're going to click that little down arrow with the line underneath it. You're going to have the three balls that are going to rotate. And either you're going to talk through the script or you're going to say, hold on a second, I'm downloading this because... I'm going to send it to you after we're done meeting on Zoom. So if I were to open that up, it looks like this, and it has all the burial information, family information guide for the client right here. Okay, If I had filled all this in, it would be right here. And the reason why it's got these word paginations is because I added additional people. So that's why it looks like this. But this is something you're going to send the client. So you want to make sure you download it so that you can live up to your commitment of what you said you were going to do. So now I've done all of this. I've gone through the script. Let's go back to the script here. I've downloaded the family information guide, and now I'm going into the last will and testament. So I'm going to close this since I downloaded it. I'm going to go down here to the last will and testament. I'm going to open it up. It's nine pages. And you can see that it's got pencil marks <clears throat> because I could add information in here. The key is, if you you should have done the survey in the beginning, everything would flow through, and so this would be populated. And what you want to do is confirm the information, and if there's a section that's not populated or you know, an item like the address or the phone number or whatever, go ahead and enter that information in and do the same thing. You save it. You do the same thing with the spouse. You probably don't have all the children, or you might. Who knows? You might have the older children as uh, family contacts. But if they're children younger, we want to get them in here, right? Should be added in there. So you're going to click on that pencil, add the information in about who they are. And then when you're done, you're going to go ahead and click the floppy disk. So going back to the script, it's about you, about your spouse, about your children. And then we just say the kit walks you through everything. We talk about notarization <clears throat> for your will to be notarized. Most states require two witnesses in their name and your will. Who would those two be for you? You're asking that question because if they 
if they have somebody in mind and that somebody's not already listed in the people to be notified, then you have two additional referrals, right? A lot of people will say, well, I don't really know yet. And that's fine. We're just giving you a chance to get two additional people. Okay. Now, once that's done, you have to download the last one testament kit so you can email it to the client because they need to get it. Because in this kit, if we keep going through this, it will have all the information in the beginning. And then on page eight right here, it tells you where you go to uh, on the web to get the kit and then what your promo code is going to be. In this case, it's 2023. When Andrew did it, it was 2022. All right. Then you're going to come up here. You're going to download it again, cause the three balls to rotate and all the information that you would save using the floppy disk on the will kit will actually be populated in that PDF file. And that's the second one in the veteran market that you're going to send to the client. So once you're done with that, you're going to click that off. And now we're going to go to the three important facts. So there's the three important facts. I'm going to click on display and I have a one page here and all I'm going to do is talk it through. So I'm going to say hey, the next thing I want to do is update you on the three important facts, number one, number two, and number three. So you've got to read all this. So it's going to be a lot of talking in the veteran market in this particular space. I advise you to have check-ins. So I would pay basically, so let's say I'm working with Jay Woodley. I'd say, all right, Jay, number one, they no longer reserve space in the VA National Cemetery ahead of time. Were you aware of that? So that breaks up the text. And then Jay's going to say, Jay, what are you going to say? Jay? So go back to that. Sorry. I'm going to say, hey, Jay, you can no longer restore space in a VA National Cemetery ahead of time. Were you aware of that? No. Okay. Well, I'm glad we had this time together so you can make sure you understand all this stuff. You're still able to pre register. So you can get the paperwork done, but it doesn't guarantee you a spot in that cemetery. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So you see what I did there? I'm giving myself a, a way to break up all this page of text by having engagement with the client. So right. I don't tell you to do that in the script because it's whatever is going to be natural for you. All right, everybody. And this goes through any of the presentation scripts. So then we go number one, number two, and number three. And then are there any questions about these burial benefits? So we've gone through one, two, and three. There's a second page. And so I tell you, turn the page, announce the veterans to be sponsored. So now I'm going to turn the page. And now I have a lot of veterans. The difference between this and the previous veterans is those veterans were people that you would notify to help the family communicate or interact with the VA. Now this page is specifically to solve this problem. 1,700 veterans pass away every day. That's over 50,000 50, families looking for the same benefits for months, unfortunately looking for them after something already happened. The VSOs have found that other veterans uh, typically sponsor nine. So what ends up happening now is the VSO is asking for help. They're stating a problem and asking for help. Hey, a lot of veterans don't even know they're entitled to receive these benefits. They can't get in contact with them. I'm talking to you, uh, uh, Bobby, you're a veteran. Do you have other veterans that you want to sponsor for the program? So it's a different mindset. And theoretically, it will give you additional veterans that can be listed. Now, that doesn't happen every single time. But if we give you more chances to do it, more referrals will come from that. So now I've gone through all this. They've given me everybody. I say, who is next? Who is next? Who is next? I keep going because I want all of that to be filled out as much as possible. And again, if I hit the pencil, I can add another person and just keep on going. Download the three important facts you can email to the client. So in the veteran market, there's the third document that needs to be sent to the client. Okay. Once that is done, downloaded, sent to the, or downloaded, because you're not sending anything to the client until the presentation's over, you're going to click X. And now you're going to go to the sponsorship program. Click on the sponsorship program icon. That is right here for all of us, regardless of what market you're in, the icon to bring up the sponsorship program is right there. You're going to click on it and it will have the name of the individual, their phone number, their email, the date, the market or the uh, organization they belong to. And then it will list all of the people 
that you put in the family information guide, the will kit for the veterans to be notified in the veteran market. For every other market, anywhere, anytime you did the survey or the family information guide or the financial information guide for the credit union, all of that stuff will be here. Okay. However, it will be grayed out because you need to, in fact, actually uh, activate that. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's go up here to the family information guide. I want to click over here. I'm just going to put one person in here for the people to be notified. So I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to say Samuel Sweets. If I can even type my own name, that would be very helpful. So the relationship is father. Let's say I'm selling it to my son. Number is five, 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 five. And let's just go with there. I want to save this. So I want to click on save. So now the data has been saved successfully. I want to download this, right? And now I want to go and look at the sponsorship program by clicking on that icon. So I'm going to close this, go down to the lower left-hand corner, sponsorship program, click on that. And now you can see that their name is there because I added it. Now that I've added it, I need to activate it. So going back to the script, when you say everyone you mention will automatically receive access to the veteran legacy benefits we just covered and they will have access. As you're saying that, you're clicking the activate button to each one of the referrals in order to increase the total gifted amount. So let's assume I had 10. The way that it works is as I'm saying that, I'm clicking this activate button when I or clicking this activate checkbox. When I click that, the total gifted amount will increase by $2,000 every single time. Are you tracking with me, Adam? Adam, are you there? Yep. Okay. How much does it increase every single time? Sir, I, I'm not sure. Are you looking at my screen? Yep. So right here, every single time it increases by 2000, right? So if I don't activate it, it's zero. And when I activate, it goes by up by $2,000, right? Is there like, can you add on to that more? Well, the value of the accidental death and dismemberment certificate that you're giving, no matter what market you're in, is always $2,000, okay? So the way that you increase this is you add more people. So let's say I add another person here. I can do that because I'm asking in the script, aside from the veterans, they've authorized you to extend your benefits to those closest to you. And if they didn't serve, they have to be 21 years of age, et cetera, et cetera. So as you're doing that, they say, okay, I want to add John. You click on the plus symbol, and now the total gift that increases by another 2000 because we're expecting you to, or we're going to send that to these people here. Does that, does that answer your question, Adam? Yep, that makes sense. Okay, Bobby, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Yes, so say so you have eight people listed. Um, you said you want to say this as you're clicking activate. So are you saying to them off camera, everyone you mentioned will automatically receive access to the veteran yeah. legacy benefits we just covered. And exactly. as you're saying that, you're clicking activate, going down the yep. list. Yes, because I want the client to see that number grow by $2,000 for each one. Okay, Got so it. if I get rid of that one and I don't activate, when you first start, it says zero. Okay, so the reason I want you in this paragraph to do that is that that number starts to increase every single time. So now the client is thinking, hey, not only am I you know, referring or doing whatever, I'm actually giving people money. I'm gifting something that's worth $2,000. Okay. Uh, Ronnie, what can I do for you? Um, that was, you answered one of my questions with that, but back to the will and testament, when you fill out that portion with them and then you download it and you send that to them, that gives them the opportunity. They can just print that out and take it in and get it notarized. And then they have a will it, and testament. That is not the will. Oh. That is not the will. Okay. What that is, is the, it talks about, uh, sorry, let me get rid of this. What it's doing is it's, I'll show it to you again. It is the information and instructions. Right. It is not the will itself. So you got to be prepared. So you put all this information together. And then what the client will do is go to this website, to or CanadianWills.com, 
and actually get the will kit and then the information okay. the document will help them fill it out. Got it. Thank you for clarifying that. Yep. Ray, what can I do for you? So the sponsorship is given the people that they um, that they sponsor. It's giving them access to the burial kit, the dismemberment, and what else? Dismemberment. Dismemberment. And what yeah. else? So if you want to know in any of your markets, you can click on more and see that says sponsorship program right there. Right. When you click display, it tells you what they're going to get. In the okay. case of the veteran market, they're getting the burial and will kit. They're getting the gift certificate and the no cost last will and testament. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Yep. In any of your markets, you can do that. You can see what will actually be sent to a client. Any other questions? Okay, no. So now we're here and we've gone through this part. So uh, going back to this icon right here, we're adding these people in and we'll click on add, we click on add, we click on add. Now, the interesting thing here is let's just take this person. What you can do is you can select the type. So the SVL stands for Sponsored Veteran Referral. So this is someone who's an actual veteran, whereas the other one is a veteran family referral. That means where you've sat down with a veteran or somebody and they've referred people into the veteran program. Doesn't mean that they're veterans. They can be friends or families or referrals. Doesn't matter. The only differentiation is somebody who's an actual veteran because we want to track how many actual veterans are we meeting with. The next one down here is called test referral. It's for training purposes only. You don't need to use that. You can add the branch of service. If they have a branch of service, you can uh, click on this button here. And what you can then do is decide what to send them. So you can see there's other things that you can send. As an example, if somebody told me, hey, I want to refer my next door neighbor as emergency contact. And uh, hold on one second. if you want to refer somebody to emergency contact and they have children, you may want to send them a gruff safe ID kit or give that to them. And so that way, when you speak with them, not only are you talking about all the other stuff, but you can also say, hey, your sponsor gave you access to the McGruff Safe ID Kits. Yes, Rhonda, what can I do for you? We can also give them that Glick RX, correct? Yes, you can give them anything that's on here that you want, you just have to know what it is. All right. Well, I, I, I looked into that yesterday, that hence the reason why I'm asking that. But one okay. of the things that they had said, you can give it whether they uh, join or not, because that's a good thing, right? Yeah, you can give them all of this stuff <laughs> that you can give to people. You you all can take all this stuff as well. All of you can get all of this, even the $2,000 gift certificate. You can, All of you can do that. Because from the company's perspective, it's a marketing expense, but the risk of uh, spending money on our side for any of that is very, very low. Okay. So you can see the things that are highlighted, no matter what market you're in, when you click on the all, this is typically what gets sent. You could include other things if you wish, or you can take something off. Like if you know that there are not veterans, you can take that one off because the referral is not a veteran whatsoever. Yeah. And that way you don't go through the veteran uh they don't see that. They don't get the uh, survey. Okay. Now, the next thing over here is notes. <clears throat> this is pretty important because let's say I'm talking to somebody and they tell me something specific about the individual that they're sponsoring. I can click on notes and I can add it in here. This is really important if I need to remember something about a referral, like, hey, only call me between a certain time, anything like that. All of that information will get saved and it will get downloaded into my lead pack. So when I click on this individual, the note will be there as well. It could be very helpful for you as you're trying to manage the relationship with these sponsors. So you go through this, you add all of it. You can see it requires the first name, last name, the city, state, phone number, relationship, if they do anything and if they have a significant other. And you have a little heart right here. <clears throat> and when you have that heart, what that means is that you can actually kind of mark it as important because when we download these, or when we save these rather, they get downloaded into your lead pack and then there'll be a star 
on these names and you can then sort based on the stars. And we're going to see that later this afternoon, hopefully in about an hour. I'll walk you through Mobile Planet and you can see what that impact is. In the future, the capability will be here to text the people directly from this uh, screen. We're not there yet, but it will be there. And then the last thing over here is the garbage can to delete because if you were going to add somebody and they go, oh, no, I don't want it, you need to get rid of it before you can save. So if I try to save, you see all the red boxes comes up. It tells me I need to fill in at least this information before it will save anything. When you're completely done, you have everything filled out, you will click the floppy disk and it will take all of that information and immediately drop it into your lead pack. Okay. So in this case, we're not doing that. So I'm just going to delete each one of these. And now I can close the screen. So we go through all of this. We've done all these sponsors name. And now we go here to the transition to the read off letter. Everything from this point on is exactly the same in all the markets. Because the markets are set up in a way for us to provide value for the no cost benefits, depending upon the market, the, the client that we're talking to. Once we get to B1, we're now in the transition to the read-off letter. Okay, so that's what it looks like for the veteran market. For the credit union market, very similar. You go through A1, you do a copy of the letter, then you say, hey, why are we meeting on Zoom? Then you get to the survey, which is different for the credit union market. You're gonna walk through that survey. You're going to go through all the services. You're going to ask them, hey, do you take advantage of this, that, or the other? And then at the end, you're going to close that one. You're going to go to the ad and group certificates, so very similar. We include the IL Plus cards. We talk about that program. And then we go into what's called the financial information guide. Functions the same way as the family information guide, but because we're in the credit union market, we've decided to go and use the financial information guide. So we just go through all of this similar to the way we did it in the veterans that I just showed you. We display the freedom of choice certificate. We go through the no cost legal will kit. We download that entire thing. So that way we can send it to the client when we're done. We go through the sponsorships program. We collect referrals. We talk about texting leads. And then we go to the transition to the read off letter. Same thing as uh, the veteran market starting from B1 moving forward. And the McGruff is a little different for Canada. So you have the opening, you have the copy of the letter, and then you have what's called warm-up. So then we really describe and we get into detail about what is the Amber Alert program? What is McGruff Safe Kids? All of this stuff needs to be read here as you're engaging with the client. You give the two reasons why you're meeting with the client, and then you go to the McGruff Child Safe Kits and you bring up that particular document. Now, remember, <clears throat> the lead itself will allow you to put the information on the initial screen. You pick the market that you are going to use to sell to that client. So I could have somebody who's a veteran in my lead pack, but I could decide to use the McGruff kit, which is, you can do that. It'll bring up only the McGruff information though. So you got to make sure you're bringing up the right market information for the type of lead that you want to sell to. So you get through all of A5, you can see it turns the page, you do all that, you go into the family information guide after you save the McGrupp Safe Kids ID kit. And you start with the family information guide, very similar to what we saw in the veterans. Then you go into the no, uh, then you have to download that rather and save it. And then you have to go into the no cost legal will kit, dash CA for Canada. You go to page seven because you've got to get to this information. And then you go into A8, which is collecting the referrals and doing the same thing as we did before. We talk about texting those leads and then boom, we're in the transition to the read off letter. Now the transition here is a little bit different because of the language uh, that needs to be used for the Canadian market. However, conceptually, it's the same. One process to another, you get to the needs analysis, and then you come here. In the no-cost legal will, fit, will kit for Canada, exactly the same concept, except instead of the child safe kit, you're going through uh, the no-cost legal will kit. So you start with the family information guide, you go to the no-cost legal will kit, you go in the sponsorship program, you text the leads, then you go in the transition to the read-off letter, et cetera, et cetera. 
Now, some of this language that's in the Canadian script is what I'm going to say it's Americanized. I have received an updated script that takes certain words out and changes them based on the way that you all use the language, which is totally fine. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. So if you run into something in this script, you're like, well, we don't say it that way. Just say it the way you would say it for Canada. Okay. So my Canadian friends, does that make sense to everybody in Canada? Okay. So you, you have multiple scripts in Canada. You've got that, you've got the union script and you have the referral script. I don't teach the union a referral script for Canada. And the only reason I don't is because I'm more concerned about the mechanics of you being able to navigate HB Pro. Once you have that down in this class, it's easy to pick up a different script and just go through the mechanics on that. The biggest thing I want to get out of this is one, follow the script, but two, know how to build the plans and the programs because that's the same no matter what. Is that a cat, Jay? <laughs> So no matter yeah. what, yeah, that is a cat. Nice. <laughs> no matter what market you're in, once you start transitioning to the read-off letter, it's fairly the same. Yes, Ronnie, what can I do for you? Um, for the sponsorships page where you're adding and adding two thousand dollars for each one that you activate, my yes. question is: is so when you're done with the presentation, that information that's in there, those are your referrals that are eventually going to get called. Do they get? A card in the mail to fill out their beneficiary, no. which in turn, you know, no. how, so how do they get contacted? We contact them we as our referral. Yeah. So they won't receive anything via mail or email or phone until no. we contact them. Well, what happens is if I'm talking to you, okay, mm -hmm. and you're the client and you give me three people, let's say you give me seven. <clears throat> I'm going to say, okay, Ronnie, who are the top two people that I should get this information out right away? And you're going to say, oh, my next door neighbor and my daughter. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would say, not a problem. And then we're going to text. I'm going to say, okay, Ryan, I'm going to send a text to them right now. I'm going to put you on the text. I just want you to say hi, hello, or a thumbs up or something like that. That way your daughter and your neighbor knows that uh, who I am and that you endorse the fact that I'm going to be calling them. Make sense? Okay. So at that moment on that screen, before we, we go out of that screen, we'll hit text and it will. Well, you're right now you're going to do the text on your cell phone. In the oh, future, no. we'll be able to text directly from HP Pro. Okay. And so you'll be doing the text while your presentation or you'll wait till yeah, after? Yeah, you will watch people. They will, not everybody does this, but I think it's a good thing to do is just say, okay, hold on. I'm going to text, you know, your daughter and your neighbor. Give me a second. Okay. I'm going to add you to the text. All I want you to do is reply to that. There are other agents that will say, hey, I'm going to take a picture of the screen of you and I together, and then I'm going to include that in the text and say, hey, I was just chatting with Ronnie. She's extended these benefits to you. I'm going to be following up with you. And then, Ronnie, I want you to give a thumbs up or an okay or say, yeah, Sam's going to reach out to you. There's more. It's much more powerful uh, when you do that than it is if you don't. Okay? Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Tiffany, what can I do for you? In HP, HP Pro, can we use the other and practice this whole thing, like putting all the information in and going through the whole script, the whole process? To practice. You're going to have to say that one more time. Can you do what? In HP Pro, remember how we practiced and used other just to put together yeah. the program? Can yes. we run through the whole thing with other and practice yes. the whole thing? Yeah, absolutely. The whole reason we put other functionality in there is to do just that. Uh, because you don't have any leads yet. Right? We need you to practice. Trust me, you should practice this a lot. Those of you in the U.S., uh, even if you're going into one market like the veterans, you should still practice the credit union. Because at any point in time, the leadership can give you a credit union lead. Once you finish with this class, you'll be qualified for both. In the Canadian market, you, they want you to know how to do this, but they may start you off with union leads. I don't know. But if they do, that's okay because they have a script for the union and now you know how to use HP Pro to get that done. Does that make sense? Yes. For you Canadian folks? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, great. Let's put that over there. And Ronnie, did you still have a question because your hand's up? Oh, no, I apologize. I forgot to lower my hand. I just okay. like my hand up there. <laughs> so now we know the various scripts that we're using and, and whatnot, right? 
whether it's uh, the Canadian, those two, or whether it's the US or those two. The important part here is control. It is control. If you're working with me and I think that you're not in control, I probably won't buy into what you're telling me. Does that make sense? So if I don't, if you don't know how to navigate HP Pro, and like, oh my gosh, they change it, this is whatever, what do you think your credibility is doing? Is it going up? Is it remaining the same or is it going down? Goes down, right? Nick Cotter's like, yeah, go, see, now I can see you guys. It goes down. Yeah. Your credibility, let's just say best case, it remains the same. We don't want it to remain the same as we go through the process of spending over an hour with somebody. We want our credibility to go up because when we get to the buying question, the more often I can get Alexis Brent to nod her head and say, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I'm following you. The likelihood that she's going to do that when I ask the buying question goes up. But if in the process, I'm talking to Bobby Brown, he's not buying into what I'm saying. I don't know how to navigate. I keep saying, hold on a second. What is Bobby going to do when I get to the closing question? He's more likely to smile and go, yeah, I don't need this right now. All right, Bobby, is that fair? That's my prerogative. <laughs> it's always your prerogative. Okay, we hold on one second. All right. That, that went uh, over. I did have a question, Bobby. Go ahead. I do, actually. Um, page nine of the veteran presentation script. Yes. When we get to B1, reading the transition, uh, transition to the read-off letter, mm -hmm. uh, is that the letter... The notification letter? Yeah, so let me show you what that looks like. Because it's, it's, so it's what different. You do, what you do, let me show you. This is <clears throat> HP Pro Show. Yeah, so what you would do is you go back to the notification letter. You click on display, and you're going to go to the next page. So let me make this a little, can I make this bigger? No, it's as big as it my next page is in Spanish, and it's actually four pages. Well, well, yeah, but what, when you flip this, this is the read-off letter. Okay, I get it. Okay, so most uh, <clears throat> most of our markets only have two pages. Some markets only have one page, and it includes the read-off information. All right. So if that's the case, that's all right. What I want you to do is read the actual language in the script because. Regardless of what market you're in, <clears throat> this, the letter language could change, the read-off letter. And we're legally required to provide information to the client that we're transitioning from the no-cost benefits into something that costs money. Okay? Every province, every, is it province, territory, region, I forget, and state requires that we do that. However, if you read whatever I wrote here or whatever's written here, I didn't necessarily write it then you're fine, you're covered. So notice that the language that's here doesn't necessarily match this letter. That's okay as long as you've read this. Sky, does that make sense to you? I can't see anybody. Sky, are you there? Sorry, uh, yes. Okay. I should be yeah, but you can't see me, sorry. Yeah, I can't see. All right, so we know we're there. So to your answer or your question, Bobby, you're bringing this up. When it comes up, it's usually on that page. If there's another page, then you're going to turn it. If there's not another page, I think on McGruff, there's not another page. There's only one page. That's okay. Just show the letter again, because in the second or third paragraph, that's the read-off information. You don't have to read whatever it says on this letter. Just read whatever it says in the script and you'll be fine. Once you read that, then you can explain, okay, now what that's saying is that after I show you all the benefits, explain how they work and answer any questions you have, if you qualify, you and your family will be able to take advantage of these benefits during your service period, which is today while we meet on Zoom. Again, we're reinforcing that this is their service period. This is the time we want them to decide if they want the benefits. Uh, Gregory, if we don't do that and they say, uh, I need to think about it, I'll get back to you. What are the odds that they're going to buy? The odds are low, but you can always reach back out to them. Yeah, even if you reach back out to them, though, a lot of times they just don't answer the phone because it's, they know it's you calling. 
So if people don't, now, <clears throat> how do I explain this? It's not an impulse buy, but we treat it like an impulse buy. We want to make sure that we've demonstrated a lot of value in the no cost benefits and the value in the permanent benefits such that people go, oh, you know what? I should really get this taken care of today. And the reason we say today is that it could potentially die tonight or tomorrow. And then they wouldn't have these benefits available for their families or whoever they're leaving them for, right? So this is why we talk about it, but that's from their perspective. From your perspective, just think of it this way, less than 5%, maybe between five and 10 of people who you meet with, if they want to think about it, or if they don't buy right then, they're not going to buy. No, less than 10% actually buy. That's a better way to put it. So 90 to 95% of the people, if they don't buy at that time, they typically don't buy later. Now you can make an appointment to follow up and there may be one or two that will actually do it. But out of the 100 people <clears throat> that you actually go through the process with, maybe five of them, maybe six of them will actually buy. In terms of those people who are saying, hey, let me think about it. <clears throat> Give me a call back next week. I got stuff on the weekend, whatever the case may be. Does that make sense to you, Greg? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and that answered Bobby's question, I think, right? Do I have any other questions? Yes. Jay, what can I do for you? Yeah, so on the presentation we watched, I noticed um, he immediately went to the, what was it, $2 each per day? <laughs> yes, he did. So when so, yeah. it came out in 19, not 19, last year, 2022, <clears throat> the thought, pro okay, hold on, let me be clear. Let's remember that Andrew Haskins is the executive director of PR for all of AO, okay? What that means is all of AO typically sells down here. AO International and AO North, which the Canadians are part of, we typically sell up here. So okay. if I were to ask AO, what is the average ALP per sale? It's probably going to be under $900. AO International, the average ALP is over $1,400. And AO North, I think, is $1,100 or more. I, I'm not sure about that one, but it's definitely higher than the AO average. So <clears throat> what Andrew's trying to do is not scare everybody by trying to go really high. Okay? But we teach everybody how to sell, how to overcome objections, how to downclose if somebody says it's too expensive. A lot of, lot, most other folks as part of AO, they don't have a formal training class that teaches them how to do this. So because we do it, we have you start much higher. So in the course, we talk about start in the middle at five, if you're going to use the dollar, uh, the dollar a day budgeting approach, we start with $5. If you're on my team, I would probably not want you to start lower than six. If you're on some of the other teams, they don't want you to start lower than seven, eight. Because they want to show a huge value. And then if necessary, they'll come down. But if they come down, it's still a very healthy ALP. So, Jay, did I answer your question? Yeah, I mean, I was going to ask. So he didn't even offer an enhanced... Mm -hmm. any enhanced coverage you know why that is well because i thought yeah that couple was already prepped and ready to go <laughs> see there's no objections it's really easy they gave all these names so for the purpose of the videos it's really good for our purposes <clears throat> if you look at the script we tell you to offer one and show one and then ask if they want to try to qualify for the enhanced version i showed you how to build that but in the script, we don't actually show that. We just tell them what the number is. If they want to qualify for it, then we build it and show the comparison between the two. But in terms of training, I teach you how to build both. There are some uh, uplines that they don't even show a second one at all. They show you the first one and then they just down close. There's other uplines that want to show three. <clears throat> Pardon me. So you have an upper, a lower, and then a middle. So the upper is pushing down and the lower is pushing up so that the majority of people buy the middle, which is recommended. You all will decide <clears throat> when you're in the field working what matches your style. My style is probably to show two. I always show a recommended and enhanced. Some people's styles only show one and then navigate from there. And again, other people's styles just show three. Don't show more than three, because if you do, it gets really complicated for a client to understand what's going on. Most people can understand good, better, best, recommended, enhanced, essential, or 
bronze, silver, and gold. We're used to the top three. We're used to power of three. Anything more than power of three, we start to get a little confused. Is that answer your question, Jay? Yeah, I mean, initially I thought the two dollars per day had to do with the fact that they have that they both have current life insurance elsewhere, but that didn't have anything to do with that. No. So we asked the question about budget, not budget, how much money they make. And if they have other life insurance for us as agents to figure out how best to pitch the portfolio. So if you were to try to sell to me, I have life insurance all over the place, but I think I might need more. So what I don't want you to do is limit yourself to $2 simply because of what you perceive my perspective is going to be. Always start with a very healthy ALP. And according to the script, it's $5 and then go up. And then if they can't buy that, then down close if that's their objection. And I'm selling in California. So I have the whole gamut. I've sold to people who make a million dollars or more a year. And I sell to people who make it paycheck to paycheck. It all depends. So as you become more and more confident in what you're doing, <clears throat> instead of following the script and only doing $5, you may talk to somebody who's making $50 an hour, even though they're retired. Maybe they have a consulting job. Maybe they're working. Who knows? At that point, you can say to yourself, okay, they have more disposable income because I've got the amount of money they make per hour and I've got what their monthly expenses are. If they have more disposable income, they're more likely to think that they can spend more money. It doesn't mean they will, it just means that they potentially could. The other thing I would tell you is if you were trying to sell a pen to me, let me find a pen. See, it's been a while since I used anything. I don't even have a pen. Isn't that pathetic? Oh, here we go. Let's say you're trying to sell this pen to me. If you said, hey, Sam, you need a pen, I go, yeah, I really need to write something with. If you told me this pen was 25 cents, as opposed to if you said, hey, look at this pen, it's got a cap, it starts at 25 bucks, but it really feels good in your hand. What will I immediately think? Will I think the pen is more valuable because you priced it at 25? Or will I think it's too expensive right off the bat? Which one do you think I'll think? Too expensive. Right, but here's the thing. That's your perspective. That is the trap that people get into. They immediately will think if you price it too high, it's gonna to be too expensive because you're looking at it through your lens. You can't do that. You have to let the client look at it through their lens. You've never asked them how much money that they wanna spend on insurance. You haven't even really pitched anything in insurance yet. And you're already thinking in your mind that, hey, 25 bucks for this pen is probably too expensive. Don't do that. Never put yourself in the client's position of how much money is that. Cause you don't know, I may only make a thousand dollars a month but I know I have some medical stuff coming up and I know I want to leave something for my kids. So maybe spending 250 bucks a month is worth it to me. So the biggest lesson from today, everybody, is don't put your own perspective on the client. Let the client give you their perspective. Okay, Jay? Uh, Ronnie, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Uh, yeah, just um, going back to where in B1 where we tra transition to the readoff letter. Um, did you say we pull up the letter, which is page one, but we can read off the script and not have to flip to the second page where it opens? No, you want to show the second page if there's one of you do. So you yeah. want to pull you want to pull that up and share your screen of both pages, the Spanish. Well, and your screen version. is shared the whole time. You've never stopped sharing. Okay, right. It's always shared. Okay. You just want to show them something. So you're going to bring up the letter if you're in the veteran market. Okay. You can flip the page. If you're in any other market and there's only one page, just show that one page, but read the text in the script and you'll be right. fine. Well, I was I was just asking because when you flip the page, you get the Spanish and the English version. And it's not really, I mean, it kind of looks kind of generic because it shows both pages. I, so I was I just wondering, if there was a trick to like not doing no, that. No or... It just okay. shows both pages. It will always okay. do that with the turn of page. Rhonda, what can we do for you? Um, I sorry, I just want to go back to um, the referrals with respect to um, one of the things I did watch last night. Obviously, is what you're talking about taking that um, picture with their thumbs up or whatever. Yeah. But um, the uh, what what would be the verbiage to get into that? Because I'm assuming that these people don't know anything that you're having this meeting. 
so um, all of a sudden they're going to receive a text with, uh, you know, the, the client and myself and then bang. Well, it's a text you are going to put together. And, and if your upline gives it to you, it simply says, hey, my name's Sam Sweet. I was just meeting with Rhonda, your sister or your brother, I'm sorry, your mom, whatever. And going over the uh, benefits to which she's entitled to receive, if it's in the veteran market, from the VSOs. Okay. I'm going okay. to be following up with you tomorrow, or I'll give you a call later, or what's a good time for us to have a conversation? And since I've sent it to both that referral and yourself, what I want you to do as a client is just give a thumbs up or say, yeah, okay, you should meet with Sam or whatever, because now what I'm doing is leveraging your credibility with the referral in order to have the discussion. Yeah, it just seems really cold call. All of a sudden it's out there and it's for it's different. You know, it's it's actually unfortunate that the Canadian segment isn't veteran oriented because I I see such a, a, a need for that. And, you know, we have the will kit, which is great. And the McGrath, which is great. But uh, it had been nice just to be able to have that part of it. But it is. Well, who knows? We might. Pardon me for a second. I dropped my pen. We might have that in the future. It's just may have something to do with the fact I don't know if the Canadians have a veteran service organization infrastructure like the U.S. does. Oh. I just don't know. And we have a lot more people that were veterans to begin with. So maybe that's the market. However, take the market out of it and just say, let's say I'm talking to McGruff and I'm talking to a mom who has three kids and she's in a mom group and she gives me seven referrals. Right. I'm going to do the same thing. Right. I say, hey, boom, boom, boom. I'm going to send the text out. To your point, is it a cold call? No. And here's why. Because even though the text is coming from me, you're copied on it. And you're responding to that text by giving a thumbs up or saying, hey, please talk to Sam. It's no longer a cold call. A cold call is where I just call you directly out of the blue and I say, hey, I was talking to Guevara, who's your sister in law. And she said you would, uh, you know, be interested in receiving the McGruff Child Safe Kit. Did she reach out to you? That is a cold call. But a text, a three-way, much more powerful, and the credibility is not mine. The credibility is yours. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so we've gone through all four of the scripts <clears throat> relative to presentations. So all of you, whatever market you're in, you need to start going over those scripts, practicing it in front of a mirror, practicing it on Zoom, doing whatever it is you need to do. We will practice it as a team, most definitely, or as a class, rather, uh, starting tomorrow. But we want to make sure that we've got the opening nailed because it all starts with that. It, you establish control, you establish confidence, which then drives your credibility. If you blow the opening... <laughs> and you're nervous or you're not in control or whatever, it is my firm belief that it, you have to then try to make up for it throughout the rest of the presentation, okay. which you can do. Absolutely, you can do it. It's just more work for yourself. Does that make sense to you, Adam? Poor Adam. I keep calling on him. Adam, what's going on, man? Are you watching TV or you got a phone down there? What's up? <laughs> uh, taking notes. Oh, Okay. Taking notes. All right. What I want everybody to do is open up the next attachment, which is the phone script. I want everybody to open up attachment four. Okay. It's the veteran. I'm sorry, not attachment four. I just went through that. Attachment five, the Pavet phone script. Okay. It'll look like this that's on my screen. Uh, I guess I should share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. So all the phone scripts are very similar, but the language changes depending upon the market and depending upon who you're calling. So in this case, Pavet is calling those people that submitted a request to us on Facebook asking for information about their benefits. We say, hey, boom, my name is this. <clears throat> so I'm going to role play it. I think I should do that. And Sky Warren, I'm selecting you to role play. Are you ready? Ready. All right. <laughs> Why is everyone I talk to like totally like I'm not that interested, but I guess I'll do it. All right, Scott. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Ring, ring. <clears throat> Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, is this Scoot? Uh, I'm sorry. Is this Sky? It is. May I ask who I'm speaking with? 
Oh, hi, Sky. My name is um, Samuel Sweet. I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income, working in cooperation with the local veteran service organizations. How are you? I'm doing good. Oh, okay, great. Um, calling you regarding the burial kit and will kit for vets, um, veterans that you requested in April using the security keyword of dog. Um, do you do you you remember filling out that request? Yes, yes, I do. Okay, so the reason I'm calling you is that your benefits have been processed, and it's my job to issue your burial guide, but most importantly, explain the VA burial benefits that you and your family are entitled to receive. Now, the, your benefits cover both you and a spouse. Do you have a spouse or significant other? No. Okay, no problem. Are you at home right now, or are you working, or are you retired? Uh, I'm working, but I will be home this afternoon. Oh, okay, great. Now, for your safety and convenience, they're issuing your benefits over a short Zoom um, call. It looks like I can take care of this for you today online at 4 or at uh, 6.30. Which time works best for you? 6.30 sounds good. Okay, great. Now, the only thing they're asking of you as a veteran to make sure at 6.30 tonight works because uh, it's gonna take away a spot from another veteran family. So 6.30 gonna work? Yes. Okay. Do you uh, receive text messages on this number? I do. Okay, what I'm gonna do is send you a confirmation text with a Zoom meeting invitation. I'll uh, also give you a call a few minutes before the appointment to make sure you're able to get on Zoom. Does that make fair? Uh, does that sound fair? Yes. Okay, I have you scheduled for today at 6.30. Uh, is there, well, you don't have a spouse, so no worries. I'll see you at 6.30, okay? Okay, see you then. All right, have a great uh, day. Me too. All right, so let me turn my camera back on. So Jennifer Amore, what score would you give me for that? Um, I would give you, I'd say three. <laughs> what? No. On a scale of one to four? I'll take a three. Oh, one to four? I'd give you like a four on a scale of one to ten. Because you did follow the script, but wow. you didn't sound confident. What? No way. Yes. Come on. Ronnie, are you buying that? I'm the facilitator. Uh, you sounded kind of mundane. Uh, I mean, you sounded mundane. confident. You sound like just kind of low-key okay okay sure type thing so that's where i agree but i mean okay, it in all fairness i've been talking to a class for a number of hours okay right? well then yes 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 you did a, i mean you did a good job you were confident <laughs> you were wow. you're also in california where hot where weed is legal <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so let me try again <laughs> because I might uh, do worse, but I got to at least give it two tries. I think that's fair. So let's, uh, who was it? I, who was I doing? Was it Sky? Hey. All right, Sky, we're going to do it again. Here we go, Sky. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, okay. Um, ring, ring. Hello? Hi, is this Sky? Yes. Hi, Sky. My name is Samuel Sweet. I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income, working in cooperation with all the local veteran service organizations. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Thanks a lot for asking. I appreciate that. And I'm giving you a call regarding the barrel guide and will kit for veterans that you requested in April using the security keyword of dog. Do you remember filling that out? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you do. So, hey, the reason I'm calling you is that your benefits have been processed, and it's actually my job to issue your burial guide, but actually, more importantly, explain the VA burial benefits that you and your family are entitled to receive. Now, these benefits cover both you and the spouse. Do you have a spouse or significant other? I do. Awesome. And what's their name? Brock. Brock. Okay. Uh, are you both working? Are you retired? Are you home right now? I'm at home, but he's working. Okay, not a worry, because these benefits apply to both of you. I want to make sure you're both available. Now, for your safety and convenience, they are issuing these benefits over a short Zoom call. And it looks like I can take care of this for you tonight around 6 or 8 p.m. I have two slots open. Which time works best for you and Brock? He actually gets home pretty late. Can we do something tomorrow? 
Well, let me take a look at tomorrow. I'm pretty busy. I might be able to move something around. Hold on one second. What time do you think he's going to be home? Um, he gets home late tonight, but he should be home by noon tomorrow. By noon tomorrow. Let me take a look. And are you going to be home as well, or are you going to be working? No, I'll be home. Okay. So I think I can do 3.30 or 6 p.m. We can do 3.30. 3.30? Okay, excellent. Now, the only thing they're asking is that uh, of you as a veteran is that you make sure that tomorrow at 630 works for both of you, because if you take that spot, it actually takes it away from another veteran family that we'll meet with. So are you sure 630 or 330 rather tomorrow is going to work for you and Brock? If it's 330, yes, we can do 330. Okay, so yeah, definitely. 330. So now let me ask you, do you accept text messages on this phone? Is this a good number to text you at? It is. Okay, great. What I'm going to do is send you a confirmation text with the Zoom meeting information. I'll also give you a call or I'll text you a few minutes before the appointment to make sure you can get on Zoom. Does that sound fair? Sounds good. All right. So I, in fact, have you scheduled for tomorrow at 3.30. You're going to receive a text and an email from me. Just make sure Barack is there because the benefits, in fact, do apply to him as well. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All right. Awesome, Sky. I look forward to speaking with you. You have a great day. You too. So now, Sky, give me a score. I'd say you did much better. Nine, ten, honestly. So ten. ten. Michael Fields, give me a score. I'd give you a solid nine, nine and a half. Much Jade more Barton. energetic. Jade Barton, give me a score. Solid nine. Okay. So here's the key for all of us to take away from this little exercise. The key is it doesn't matter what happened on the previous thousand phone calls I made. It doesn't matter if every presentation I gave today, no one showed up. It doesn't matter if my house burned down or something and I'm, I'm working to the client. It may matter to me, but it doesn't matter to the client. If they can't see you, then the only thing they can rely on is what they hear. Right? If I call everybody the same way I did with Sky the first time, <clears throat> what's the likelihood they're going to buy into me? Not as high as maybe the second time I did it. So the key for me is it doesn't matter what happened to you before you get on the phone call with a client. They have no idea. And they really don't care. What they care about is who is this person calling me? Why are they calling me? And am, am I engaging? I can't tell you the number of times I've seen students practice this and they just practice it because they're just going through the motions, which is totally fine if you want to get familiar with the script. The problem is if you don't practice the way you're going to play, then when you actually go to play, this is a sports analogy, when you go to play, you're only going to play as well as you practiced. Consistency is key. Whenever I talk to a new class, no matter what happened in the class before, you're a brand new class. For the first time I'm meeting you, I've got a set of standard, right? If I talk to my upline, same concept. Doesn't matter what happened in their lives before I talk to them. That's my opportunity. I want to make sure I get my point across. I want to make sure I'm engaging so that they want to take my phone call. If I called Sky the way I did the first time, do you think that they'll show up for the appointment? I don't think so. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. But there is the odds that they probably won't. And the second time, if I'm a little more engaging, it sounds like I'm somebody she would want to talk to. My odds go up that they'll actually show up for the appointment. So it's the same thing we talk about with all of you when you come to class every day. I don't know what happened to you before the class started. I don't know what happens to you afterward. But when we're engaging, you don't know anything that's going on in my life, but I'm pretty consistent as how I come across. Is that fair? Is that a fair statement, right? I try to be somewhat upbeat. I try to play bad music. I mean, good music when we start the class. I try to engage you to get us in the mindset. That's the type of approach you should take with every single phone call. Even if you made 200 phone calls today and only one person answered. That one person could be, who told me last night that's a $3,300 deal? Who told me they observed a $3,300 deal last night? That was me with Jerry Sandoval. There you go. That could be the $3,300 deal. One phone call could make 
<clears throat> your presentation. One presentation can make your week. One week can make your month. One month can make your year. If I sold that $3,300 deal and I got paid whatever it was, 1200 bucks out of that <clears throat> for one week, one deal, I'm going to be fairly happy. But if it if that appointment came about because it was my 249th phone call of the day before and I sounded down, disparaging, or not engaged, I may never have had that said. Yes, Jay, what can I do for you? Is there a uh, voicemail script or like certain thing we're supposed to say? <clears throat> no, because uh, I don't advise you ever to leave a voicemail. Let me give you the stats on that. If you're my age, you leave a voicemail to me. Sorry, if you leave a voicemail to me at my age, probably 20% of the time I'm going to listen to it. If you're my kid's age, you cut that in half. If you talk to anybody younger than that, they don't even listen to voicemail. How many people listen to their voicemails? See, there are so a couple of you, but not very many, not 100%. So a voicemail, here's the problem with voicemail, Jay. If you don't have it recorded, then every time you leave a voicemail, it's going to be a little bit different. Even if you're reading it off a script, every single time it'll be different. If you have a text, though, that'll be the same text. You just copy and send it, copy and send it, right? The other thing about a voicemail is it takes time. If I'm calling you, Jay, and you don't answer, and I say, okay, I'm going to leave a voicemail. I'll say, hey, Jay, this is Sam with Swiggy with so-and-so. That's going to take 15, 20, 30 seconds, right? In 15 or 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I can actually call you back twice. Double dial, triple dial is what it's called. Or <clears throat> I can finish with you and call me in, right? I can generate more phone calls and I can generate more text in the time it takes to leave a voicemail. I'm not a big believer in voicemails. However, I will tell you this, you may want to do it one time when you get your lead pack, whether your initial lead pack is new agents or every month when you get a refresh lead pack, you may want to leave a voicemail just on the off chance that somebody will listen to it. But you're going to get a lot higher ROI off continually calling them and sending text or even emails than a voicemail in this day and age. As evidenced by the fact most people here said they don't even listen to their voicemails. Does that answer your question, Jay? Yeah. And in what case would we double dial or triple dial? Just every single situational? time. Situational? Every, every, every time. single time. I mean, why not? So if I try to call you, Jay, and I let it ring twice before you can answer it and then hang up and then call you right back, what are the odds you're going to pick up the phone? Higher. Yes. Maybe. They may be higher than just the one time. Because if you, eh, where's my phone? I lost my phone. Okay, here it is. If you were to call me, I'd look at it and go, oh, that's an out-of-state number. I'm not going to answer. So I take my phone, I put it down. And all of a sudden it stops. I'm like, okay. And then it rings again. I'm going to look. I'm like, well, why are they calling me back? At that moment, I intentionally make a decision. Well, this could be important. It could be an emergency. What's going on? I'm going to answer. The odds are higher that somebody answers if you double dial. Triple dial is when you do the same thing, you just add it once. So what you do is you call that ring twice, hang up, call that ring twice, hang, call again. Now, if you were to get me, I'm going to say, hey, why the heck are you calling me three times? Oh, we're just trying to get a hold of you because of the whatever market you're in, right? It's the veteran market, it's this, it's credit union market, it's that. And you explain why you're calling. And you can say something like, well, sometimes the system doesn't allow the phone calls to go through or we're just trying to get a hold of you or... Sometimes I'll even ignore what they said. And I'm just like, hey, uh, Rivera, I'm so glad we're finally able to get a hold of you. We've been trying to call you to issue you the benefits that you requested. That immediately changes the dynamic of the conversation of why are you trying to call me all this time to, oh, what are you, what are you talking about? And the moment that happens, now you can go into the phone screen. Does that answer your question, Jay? Yeah. Okay. Did I have other questions? Because I thought I saw their hands up and then they went down, or is that from before, or am I confused? I'm going to go with I was confused. Okay, so the script that I was showing you was the Habit phone script. Let's see what the Canadian phone script looks like for the what the no cost legal will kit. So let's click on that. There it is. Let's show that on the screen. And this is for our Canadian friends. It's similar here in terms of how to get the appointment. What, what changes is this. Hey, my name is Sam. I'm with American Income Working Cooperation with Can, uh, Canadian. I keep saying that. With Canada Wills on your no-cost 
will get you requested. All right, so I'm not cold calling you. You sent something in that requested this information. How are you? Oh, that was sent on this date. Here's the keyword. And then I need to explain what it is that I'm doing. Now, there's a lot of text in here. I would advise you to check in. You know, hey, do they have us meeting with two reasons? Go over your kits and make sure your promo code, uh, make sure you get your promo code so you can get your will kit done at no cost. Isn't that cool? It's not gonna cost you any money. That's a check-in. If you do that consistently, it breaks up all this text. Then the uh, second thing is explain the funeral and final expense benefits are no reserved for all the union members. And then down here, this moves in the same concept of how to actually set up the appointment. Very similar to all the rest of them. Right now, there's another one, and it's called the referral. And I want to show you this one because it's a little bit different. And yes, it's in the veteran market, but the problem here it's not a problem. The issue is that no one has requested information from us. That name was provided to us through our presentation. That's now a referral, and now I'm reaching out to them. So if they respond to the text that I sent, all good and fine. If they don't, and you're trying to call them. Then you just say, hey, I'm with whatever division of American income. How are you? I had the pleasure of sitting down with uh, whoever it is in the relationship uh, the other day to talk about their benefits that they receive. Now, this one we use specifically for veterans, but conceptually, it works for all the markets when you have referrals. You just go through this information, and then you go through the standard tie downs in order to set the appointment. This is fairly straightforward, and I guarantee you your upline is going to have you practice this and practice this. And then they're going to want you to make phone calls. Why, Sierra, do we want you to make phone calls? To practice? <laughs> well, you've been practicing in the script, hopefully on your own and with each other and with your upline. But then they want you to actually make a phone call to a client. It's our next what? step because they have to watch us over to make sure we're doing it properly, I'm guessing, right? They have to watch us over? Okay. <laughs> I mean, they have to go through it with us. Like my yeah. people, they had me do it like 80 times just because they wanted to make sure I was comfortable, had it right. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. But why are you calling on actual clients? What is the reason for that? You know? It's okay if you don't know. I mean. I'm going to tell you if you don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't the reason, know. The mm -hmm. reason is because you're calling on their leads. So think about the logic. I'm your upline. I'm your SA. I'm like, hey, Sierra, come in. We're going to practice this nine ways from Sunday. Once I feel confident that you can make a phone call and set an appointment, I'm going to give you access to my lead pack. You don't have any leads yet, but you're going to call on my leads because you need to practice with live people. But the benefit of that for me as an SA is now you're calling on my people to set up appointments for who? For me, right? So understand what's the value of an hour of your time, Sierra? It's limitless. <laughs> is that the right answer? You said don't put a value. I'm not on. looking for the right answer. Well, okay, what's the value of my time for an hour? Do you remember? Five Five thousand, right? And so the, we said the class you guys kind of learned. You, you went from twenty to fifty, and now you're at about thousand, right? Yes. So thousand dollars. So if you're making calls on behalf of someone else, are you helping yourself? Or are you helping them? Or are you doing both? You're doing both. Okay. Um, if you're doing both, then what is your value to the agent's leads? Thousand dollars an hour, right? Right. Right. So if you set an appointment for somebody <laughs> doing this process, guess what I want you to do? I want you to present to the client. That makes sense. Absolutely. Now, you may not be ready to do it today. I totally get that. But starting next week, you should be able to present the first part of the presentation to the client. By the end of next week, you should be able to go in front of a client. Doesn't mean you're completely confident. Doesn't mean you're going to do it exactly right. hundred percent. But you should be able to go in front of a client and go through that market, go through that presentation all the way through and get the referrals. Now, why do I say that? Because if you do that, in some uplines, they require you to do that because that's part of your rubric. That's how they're going to test you with a live client. Other uplines prefer to make you wait and do it with them until they're completely confident you know how to do it. 
my beef is not, I don't have a beef, but my issue is this. If I'm one of you and I'm sitting in your chair, every day you're with me, how much money are you making? No. Zero, yeah. right? I want you to start making money as soon as possible because if you don't make any money, then what happens is you fall off. You're like, hey, I can't make any money and it's no good. So the sooner you can make money, the better. And I want you to get into that mindset that your time has value. So if it's me, I'm sitting in there and they say, hey, uh, go in and set an appointment. I'm going to say, great. Can I present to that client? Oh, well, we don't think you're ready. Okay, what do I have to do to be ready to present to the client? I know I'm not going to get the sale, but if I present to the client, what am I going to get out of it at a bare minimum? I'm going to get what out of this at a bare minimum if I present to the client? Experience experience Girls. practice sure i'm going to get a practice and there's no doubt about that but i can get that by calling my own clients once i get my lead pack right i'm going to get yeah, really. so i want those referrals i want to build my own lead pack as soon as possible so that when my license comes through and all the rest of it happens i can call those people and in my mind i'm making the best use of my time okay jay did you have a question no no Okay, so what we went over today is the presentation script. We watched the presentation of the veteran market. We talked about the scripts for all of the markets so you get a sense of how that works. Tomorrow, we're going to be practicing uh, the presentation in breakout rooms with each other. I don't care which script you use. How many people, can you raise your hands? How many Canadians do I have in here? I think it's like seven or eight. Well, electronically, raise your hands. One, two, three, four. Four, four. I only have four of you. One, two, three, four, five of you. Six of you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have six. So I'll create one room for the Canadians so that way you can work with each other on your script. And then the other rooms will be uh, broken out for the US and you just will go to a room. You'll pick your room, but you need to practice your presentation scripts. I'm expecting you to practice your phone scripts on your own or with your upline. And the reason for that is in this course, reading something is not a challenge for any of you because you've all read stuff to me. So I know you can read the phone script. Do you have to inject a little bit of liveliness and stuff like that? Absolutely. But the presentation script is the most important part for this course to make sure that you can get through it. There is one more document that I want you to take a look at before I let you go. It is attachment number two, and it is called phone rebuttals. Because when you make phone calls to people, they're going to give you reasons that aren't aligned with what you want to have happen. So the first one, and these are generic. These are ones I commonly hear. It doesn't mean that this list is comprehensive. It just means these are the ones I'm aware of that happen the most. Can you just mail it to me? I already have, know my benefits. I already have my benefits. I don't want to buy anything. I already have insurance. I actually don't have any time right now. I don't have access to the internet. Uh, I don't remember ever sending anything in. That happened with me a lot, <clears throat> regardless of what market, for return cards. Because sometimes it takes a long time for those to get to us, or we can't get a hold of them. They'll forget. Or their spouse will have submitted a request for information, and they don't know anything about it. So, you know, if I was married, my wife may say, hey, you're a veteran. I was on Facebook. I saw this Pabit thing. I'm going to go and put your name in it and see if we can't get any benefits. And then you're going to call me and I'm going to be like, I have no idea what we're talking about. Right. I don't want to do this. There are people who say, no, I'm not interested. I didn't realize it was going to require a phone call. I just want you to send me information. You're not trying to sell me anything. Or does my significant other spouse actually have to be there? So as you're practicing these phone scripts to set appointments, these are some basic rebuttals to the standard objections that I've heard about coming from the field and my own experience as well. So I want you to have that ready as you're practicing your phone scripts. We will do a short phone script practice tomorrow, but we will really spend time on the presentation. Do I have any questions about either the market presentation or the phone script? Yes, Ronnie, what can I do for you? I can help you find the mute button. So the legend from this class I'm going to put is big Sorry. letters, M-U-T-E. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to 
go with the first part. We're not going to the part of presenting the first part of the presentation, not the second part. I don't know what you mean by the second part. All the way up to uh, what is it? B one. We're going to practice all the way up to where B one starts, and then we stop there. Or do we practice Are the you entire about presentation on your own tonight? Yeah. Yeah, you need to go through the entire presentation. Okay. What you're doing on your own is you're practicing and from muscle memory to go, okay, here's mm -hmm. A1, it's my opening, and go all the way through the process. Tomorrow in class, we're going to get through A1 and, I'm sorry, not A1, we're going to go through part A and part B. That's where we're okay. going to be practicing because you've already built the plans, right, everybody? You've built the plan. So for you to go through all of part A, to get to C, you've now done all of that. So tomorrow you're going to practice that again and again and again. And then the next day we're going to practice C and D, which is here are the benefits in D, here's the closing, regardless of what market you're in. <clears throat> so all of you should nail at least your A1 by tomorrow on camera, right? Right? Do we all agree that that part should be nailed and memorized? Kenyon, you agree? Yes, I do. All right, awesome. And we need to be confident. We don't need to look over here or look over here. Just look at me. And what did I say about A1? I'll tell you. If you don't read it word for word, I'm okay with that. But have a conversation. Give me the reason why you're here. And if you're in a particular market like the veterans, then I want you to thank the person for being a veteran in their service to the country. Keep in mind tonality. Remember the difference of my first session with Sky and then my second session? That was all about tonality and energy. You've got to bring energy no matter how many times you practice it, no matter how many phone calls you make, no matter how many presentations or whatever happened before you got on class with us, you got to bring your A game. Mia Irwin, what did the class teach you today? Um, don't put your own perspective on the client. Don't put, okay, that's fair. Jay Martin, what did the class teach you today? Download everything. <laughs> Download everything and send it to the client. Jennifer Amore, what did the class teach you? Um, just how to make the script more conversational, uh, how to engage with the client and bring your energy. Okay. Uh, Jay Woodley, what did the class teach you today? Yeah, just to be confident and um, to build up your, uh, build confidence in yourself, you know, through the client. So they believe you know what you're talking about and they can trust you. Okay. And Diana, what did the class teach me today? I was just going to say what Jay said. It's really all about confidence and knowing what you're talking about and just coming, uh, calling them with a good, just being like enthusiastic. Diana, what was the question I just asked you? What the class taught me today. What, what did I say? What did I exactly say? Do you remember? I said, what did the class teach me today? Oh, teach you. So here's a good teaching moment for everybody because this happens, <clears throat> repetition. Remember I said, if you are engaging and you get people to say yes, 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 yes. When you finally get to the question you want, which is, hey, do you want to go with the recommended plan, which is X, or do you want to try to qualify for the ANS plan? The likelihood they're going to say yes because they've been conditioned that way is much higher. So we just saw it with Diana. I think we saw it yesterday too, right? Where I asked the same question for three people. When I get to the fourth person, <clears throat> I change the question, but she's been conditioned because she heard me ask it three times a different way. And so she just gives me her response of what you learned. Nothing against you, Diana. It happens to all of us. Okay, it happens to all of us. So now that I've explained it to you, give you a second chance. What did the class teach me today? Mm, well, I don't think it taught you anything that you... <laughs> <laughs> the that I don't here. already know? Oh my gosh, yeah. I always tell something away. Okay, all right, that's fair. Kenyon Weatherspoon, yeah, what did one. the class teach me today? Bring the energy to each client. 
I so the class taught start... that to me, or did I teach that to you? Well, you taught it to us, but you kind of put it when it made the first um, script, how you went started off and you had too much energy. Then the second time you added energy. Okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> Adam. Adam's like, I want to get out of here. Let me give the right answer so we can be done. Adam, what did the class teach me today? Uh, I think maybe a couple things, um, you know, just in our introduction with the A1, you learned a little bit about our uh, mission statement. Um, you possibly also learned a little bit about the social hierarchy um, when we picked who was the best in our groups to present. You're kind of learning who the leader was there um, and also a little bit into our psyche of how we're going to uh, react to tonality and uh, in, uh, as individuals and uh, how we're going to rate different presentations. Uh, individually as well. Very good, Adam. That was awesome. Yeah, you're exactly right. Patty, what do you got for me? I think what the what you learned from it is that we all need to find out where our mute button is. <laughs> sure, that is part of it. We, that, yeah. <laughs> we all need to work on that part. Hey, yeah. it's been a pretty good session today, I think. I think you got a lot out of it. At least I hope you did. Uh, but to Adam's point, I do pick up on a lot of things and the way that I have you do certain things is one, so that you can learn, but two, so that I can learn from you about what you do, how you do it, who you are, what I call natural selection. When you have a group of people who naturally kind of is seen by others as potential leaders or who they would want to emulate. I also, from that very same exercise, determine people who don't want to be called on right? That say, hey, I don't want to be up in front or whatever the case may be. And then we see people like Sierra, who's like, hey, I'm not ready. I'm not, but I'll do it. Right. So I like to see that level of energy and commitment because not all of us are going to jump off the, the diving board into the water just because someone told us to. But if you can at least put your toe in the water, that's a start. And that's what I'm looking for. Yes, Sierra, last comment. What can I do for you? You guys can always pick on me because I I can laugh it off. I can laugh at myself. So if anyone wants to put pressure on me, then just go ahead. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't want to put any pressure on anybody. Public humiliation is real. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. Just so everyone else, I'm probably going to edit You're that killing it. Our video. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot uh, for the time with me today. I want you to know that I'll tell your uplines at the bottom of the hour that you're available. I will stick around for any additional questions. Other than that, I will see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great afternoon and or evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.